Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Um, we're going to play some chess. <laughs> we're going to work on the chess bot as well. Um, nice. Oh, that's good to hear, Asset Spark. Working on CRUD, create, read, update, delete. But hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Um, we are going to continue working on a thing that we started working on a long time ago. <laughs> uh, well, not a long time ago. I don't know, weeks ago. What's happening? But leechess.org they have an api we created a bot <laughs> strong start <laughs> uh, they, we created a bot where i can play against the bot and you in the chat can control the moves that the bot makes um the bot's name is samwise gardener there they are we've only played it in two games so far uh we won one lost one uh, but basically the way it works is i challenge this bot to a game and then in the twitch chat you all can vote on the next move that the bot will make. Um, so we're going to work on that today. Uh, another thing we worked on is we, we we made just a basic chessboard with vanilla JavaScript. And eventually what we wanted to get to was a page where you could visualize the uh, potential moves that you would vote on the bot to make. Uh, in Zamar Plays, thank you for that five-month resub. I'll read your message in just a second. Um, let me see if I can start that up. We made a... Uh, chess board? What do we call it? Oh, it's called chess board. <laughs> um, and if we just serve it, it's it's basically this. So we, we built this a few streams ago. Um, but I think what we'll work on today is actually showing the pieces on this board. Um, and then, I don't know if we'll have time, but eventually we can get to the point where when it is your turn to make a move, uh, whatever people vote on, it'll be visualized on this board, so you'll have a better idea of what move you're voting on. I guess. I don't know. Well, what's up, Melinda? Welcome to the show. Uh, we got a lot of supports today. Uh, some gifted subs. Tons of gifted subs uh, from Funny Dude. I appreciate you, Funny Dude. Thank you so much. Um, and then also, uh, Zamar plays with that five-month resub who says, Sorry I haven't caught you. Caught your stream in two months. Happy to be here. Well, thank you for being here. And don't you, don't you, don't you apologize. Don't you apologize. <laughs> Wait, great name? Funny dude? What's a great name? Oh, the bot. You're saying the bot's name is a great name? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but I appreciate you, funny dude. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I got a decent amount of sleep. I'm streaming an hour later today because I had a, a later meeting at work. Usually I don't have meetings on Fridays, but I had a meeting today. Um, so that's a thing. I think, I think just to get warmed up, I'm gonna pl I'm gonna play a game of chess. And I saw that our moderator, one of our moderators, Bob, Bob's Paradox, challenged me to a duel. So Bob, if you send me a uh, five, uh, let's do blitz, do a five minute game. Uh, if you challenge me to that, I will play you right now, Bob. Bob. <laughs> Oot. <laughs> oh, that's true, Murdoch. You know what? Maybe I just work better off of five hours of sleep, because you're absolutely right. I actually only got five hours of sleep, because I was watching Alka stream. Shout out to Alka, who's probably sleeping right now. But um, I was watching Alka stream till like 1 or 2 a.m. <laughs> uh, okay, we have a we have a challenge from Fish Bacon, who I do believe is Bob's Paradox. But give me a second. I'm, we're going to... I, I know you came here for the code, but we are going to uh, diverge. Diverge? We're going to make a detour. But hey, Aknot now, thank you for that gifted sub. Um, we're going to make a detour into the Twitch chess category uh, and play a five-minute game against Bob. Here we go. Type one in the chat if you're excited. Type one in the chat if you're not excited. Type one in the chat if you're just happy to be here. <laughs> Digress. All right, well, I have the black pieces. Uh, Queen's pawn game. Here we go. Here we go. <sighs> now, I don't. What is this move? You know. So here's the thing. I've actually gotten worse at chess. I lost eight games in a row last night, and I was just so mad at myself. Like I, I don't know. I don't know what. I feel like I got better because I had been practicing and reading. And then last night, I just lost eight games in a row. And also, I learned about the Wayward Queen attack. I got I got got by the the Wayward Queen attack, like three different games last night. I had no idea how to respond. I read about it, um, so hopefully I won't fall for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna tilt either. 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, Queen's Gambit is a great show. Uh, most people that are getting into chess these days are getting into it because of Queen's Gambit. Um, I, I, me being one of those, but I, I got got. Yeah, but I, but I did play uh, chess. I was in chess club when I was like in third grade. All right. Uh, this this horsey is infiltrating my space. What do I do? He's gonna come over here and a, he's gonna attack. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of a little bit of this. Take the bishop. <laughs> um. Oh oh, I, the bishop is hanging. I didn't even see that. I didn't even see that. Yeah, bishop's hanging right now. Thank uh, thank you. But also, I shouldn't read chat and cheat. So uh, up until that move, we were both playing a very uh, developing and non-aggressive game. So look, look at this queen. This queen is just bothering me. It's coming over to this side, so I think I'm going to castle long just to get out of the way of the queen. But that could have been a bad move. I have no idea. Oh, there's a hype train? Thank you, everyone. Thanks for that hype train. Um, all right, what do we do now? This is a safe spot. Do I move here? Why the heck not? Why the heck not? Howard, thank you for that Twitch Prime resub. Okay, uh, I just lost a bishop. <laughs> uh, I guess I take, but then I'm weakening my my pawns on this side. Uh, let's take. If you do exclamation mark define drop, you can get more info about the drop game. So apparently, I'm up a bishop. Okay, the horsies keep on coming. I don't like it. Um. So, okay, I gotta learn how to use these arrow thingies. I lost, I lost the knight. I lost the horsey. <laughs> so that horse could go there. It could go there. What is it? Oh, it's threatening my bishop. It's threatening my bishop. Okay, what do we do? Let's just do a little bit, a little bit of this. Yeah. Um. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad. So he, he's attacking. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody just mentioned a fork on c6. So, uh, he's attacking my queen and my bishop. Um, so I should probably move my queen. Most people would probably suggest that. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move my queen right there. Uh-oh. Shebza! Oh, five gifted. Thank you, Shebza, for the gifted sub. Uh, oh no, that was like a- that was a triple fork. Quadruple fork. <laughs> triple fork. I just traded a rook for a- rook for a, uh, a horsey. Alright. So, I gotta- I gotta start making a plan. Gotta make a plan. I'm I'm also low on time. I'm gonna move the horsey. The horsey's gonna go here. <laughs> yeah, this bishop isn't doing much over here, and he can't really go anywhere. Um, may maybe I move my pawns. Dolderer, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. All right, Bob's got a plan. I don't know what that plan is. Rooks don't move that way, but got Bob's got a plan. Um, I think. I think I'm gonna do this, just so I can get my bishop on a more active square. Oh yeah, that's a 2020 pajamas emote, isn't it? Okay. Um, bishop for rook? Yeah. I mean, okay, so pawn goes here. I could take the pawn, he could take my bishop, but I'm, I'm gonna attack his rook. Three unprotected pawns. Where? I mean, that's an unprotected pawn. That's an unprotected pawn. Yeah. <laughs> the horsey. Okay, so he took mine. Well, I'm just gonna. I gotta trade a bishop for a rook, right? That's what. That's what you do. Um, and now let's get this pawn out the way like that. Surprise fire is still there. Oh, is there a um Wait, what just happened? <laughs> That's the wrong button. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, uh rook, yeah, what is this rook even doing? Um he's not really threatening anything or is he? I need to I need to start making things happen. Um I'm going to go here. 
at this point, I guess I've just been playing defensively. I don't know. I can't. I can't talk while playing chess. It. It. Uh. It. It. Um. Makes me play bad. Oh, the curse. Curse logo. All right. Refactor. Thank you for that eight months. Re eight month resub. Wow. It's a long time. Okay, so this this is nice. It's uh, attacking the rook, but also I win the bishop, or I guess he could protect. He he could protect with his with his rook. Level three high train. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I'm making a plan. Um, so, I mean, pawn. What? He's trading a pawn for a rook. No, because see, if I if I take this rook right here, the queen's just gonna come right in and, and check me. But also, it's a free rook, right? Free rook. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Jabru, for that uh, tier one sub. Um, free rook. <laughs> uh, let's go there. All right. Apparently, I'm up pieces somehow. I'm down on time, though, but the, uh, Bob's clock is going down, too. I think after this game, we're going to write some code. Yeah, okay, so that was probably a good a good move. Trade bishops. He's got a lot more pawns than I do. Uh, okay, what's his plan? It's gonna start. It's gonna tr start taking pawns. I gotta check. Gotta get it. I gotta make a check happen here. <laughs> the plan is to win. <laughs> um, let's do one of these. Um. Watch out for stalemate. No, I got this. I got this. I am the the master of the stalemate. Um, well. Uh, let's do a little bit of this. Rook check. Yeah, so I, I mean I could have, but then he's just gonna like get out of it. So I think I have no plan, but we're gonna we're gonna go anyways. Check. Mate in two moves. Did I do the right thing? Uh, check. Uh, check. Uh, <laughs> what do I do? I only have 32 seconds. Um, let's go for this. Oh no! Am I gonna get checkmated by pawns? Rook H2, mate. Oh, if I would have done... Okay. But... Um, I didn't see it. I should have done it. How does he get out of this? Oh, take the pawn. Oh, no, he can't take the pawn. Take, take the... Take the... Yeah, take the rook. <laughs> And then he's gonna probably take my pawn. Takes the horsey. <laughs> All right, uh, checkmate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good game, Bob. Um, yeah, I think I did. I did well enough. I did well enough to be able to. I, I missed mate a couple of times. Let's go to the analysis board. I missed mate, but I still pulled through. Um, how does this work? Do I click this? For any uh, a chess aficionados that are watching, how how well did I did I do okay? <laughs> did, did, did I do okay? Um, oh, request a computer analysis. There we go. I think this just uses. This is actually pretty interesting when you think about it. This is using uh, the uh, Stockfish. Simi, okay. Well, thank you. How to code? Uh, so Stockfish is a um, an open source chess engine, but I'm pretty sure that it actually runs the analysis in in the browser which is cool so like it doesn't actually have to send anything to the server literally javascript is running behind the scenes analyzing the moves and um uh is saying what like what what was a good move what was a bad move that kind of thing i did okay kappa <laughs> maybe you cracked under pressure bob but that, that i i feel like that was a decent game at least i didn't blunder too much 
I have not coded a, a chess game, and I think, um, at least for now, uh, any any re chess related things we do, we're probably just going to use chess.js. We actually haven't pulled this library in yet, uh, but this library is nice. Um, because it uh, validates moves. So it can say whether or not a move is valid. It, it keeps track of the board position. It can accept a fend string. Um, and so I think we're going to use this in combination with my very basic chessboard to get some chess pieces on there. Stockfish. <laughs> All right. Um, let's close that. Let's go back to the first move. Um, It'll tell me when it was, yeah, so it'll say uh, uh, knight b2 was, no, 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 uh, knight b4 was an inaccuracy. I should have gone here. That's what Stockfish will tell me. Um, yeah, and then I, okay, I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> the post-game analysis is done on a server clusters. The live analysis on the top right is Wasm. Oh, okay, that's good to know. I... I had assumed that, like, because Lee Chess is free and they only have certain, like, server, uh, a certain number of servers available, I would, I assume that some of this is done in browser. But I guess when I click request computer analysis, that actually puts me in the queue to make a request on the back end. I don't know. I shouldn't talk about things I don't know about. <laughs> actually, I do that all the time. Welcome to the coding garden. All right. Um, let's vote on what we're going to do. Um, yeah, no, Lee, Lee Chess is, I, I'm probably swapping between Lee Chess and Lee Chess, but Lee Chess is fantastic. Like, the, the fact that, um, well, first of all, the code base is open source, so that's awesome. Second of all, they host it, uh, for, for anybody can play games for free. It's totally based on donations. It's a beautiful thing. And, in my experience, it works better than chess.com. Uh, but... <laughs> I think actually what I want to do, I'm not even, I, I was thinking we were going to, um, yeah, yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the snowflakes will get yeeted every now and then if they hit each other. Um, yeah, and so yeah, me and Bob have talked about this before, but it seems like the ratings on Lee Chess are not right. They're not the same as like, because like on chess.com, I think I'm rated like 600 or so, but on Lee Chess I'm rated like 900. I don't know. Something blocking the right area of the screen. <laughs> How long has that been there? Uh, that's my that's my monitor. <laughs> well, there has that been there a long time? That's embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're, we're going to move out of the chess category, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take take this this very basic board that we made, and I'm going to put chess pieces on it uh, using uh, Chess.js. Does that sound like a good plan? Everyone smile in the chat. If you think it's a good plan, also smile in the chat if um, you're just happy to be here. <laughs> Great plan. Let's do it. Okay. Um, Back into the science and technology category. Here we go. If uh, if anybody found me in the chess category, welcome. Let's write some code. <laughs> so uh, the code for this chessboard is open source. We wrote it a couple of streams ago. Um, it's super basic. It was it was kind of fun to um, to just write it with vanilla JavaScript. We're not using any framework or anything like that, um, but. Uh, you will notice that this chessboard is accurate. The bottom right square is white. The bottom right square is white, and that's how you know it's right. Um, and also, this chessboard is uh, is responsive. Look at this. No matter what screen size you view it on, it's a beautiful square, and it just fits. We wrote that last time, and we wrote the logic to come up with like the labelings for all the squares. We'll probably get rid of that. Uh, maybe we'll put the, like we'll add we'll add some settings so like you can turn these on like in the bottom. Uh, bottom right or something like that. This is actually very useful for me because uh, a few weeks ago I was like learning chess notation and um, I, I realized algebraic notation is easy enough, right? You just match up the letters with the numbers, but I kind of want to memorize like what every square on the board is. I don't know. But yeah, Avi, if you link me to your, your Chrome extension, we'll check it out. I remember you mentioning that last time. But okay, let's get this, let's open up this code. I'll give you an overview of what we did last time to make the basic chessboard, and then we'll add chess.js. Um, uh, 
Okay, it all starts with the index.html. So in here, we have this div. It has an ID of board, and that's where the chessboard lives. We've got some styles here and here. And Jorge, what's up? It's been a while. Thank you for that 713 sub. Uh, YouTube Auto HD. Oh, oh. So Avi, Avi has made a ton of uh, Chrome extensions. So this is a browser extension that changes YouTube videos based on FPS, first person shooter, frames per second. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah, and if you check out Avi's website, they have a bunch of Chrome extensions linked as well. Super cool. Uh, they have, if you're, I mean, you're on Twitch right now, but they ba they made this extension called the Twitch Channel Points Bonus Collector. Uh, first person shooting. <laughs> um, uh, if you install this extension, it automatically clicks the, uh, the, the, the this points button that pops up down here every now and then. It'll automatically click that, which is pretty sweet. Okay. Um, Avi12 is one person. Yeah, I, I know. Did I say something different? <laughs> um... All right, what are we we're going to we're going to review the code. So, we got a we got a div, it has an ID of board, we've got some CSS and then we're pulling in the javascripts. An interesting thing here if you're if you're new to this is we have script type module here. So, we've written our code uh, using import export syntax and we don't have any sort of build process. It all just works in the browser. So, if I look at index, this brings in board.js. We create an instance of the board and tell it that it should live on the element with ID board. Uh, and then if we take a look at board.js, um, it does a few things. So, um, well, it has one init function, <laughs> but uh, the constructor takes the selector. So that's like where it's going to live on the page. And then it also accepts a, uh, a size. And if you don't pass in the size, then it automatically becomes responsive. Uh, we're using these files to do labeling later on. Um, yeah. So set the size of the board. And then we create the squares. Uh, and in this case, in this case, we just have an array of length 64. For every item, we figure out what the rank in the file is. Uh, we came up with this fancy logic to determine whether or not a square was is black or not. Uh, and then we create an instance of a square. And then square is uh, just another little file here um, that takes in the rank file and whether or not it's black. And then it just um, adds its. Well, no, it creates an element. Um, it doesn't add itself to the page. It's just kind of like this is encapsulating the idea of a square. And then the board does the job of actually putting it on the page inside of the parent board. Yeah, that's it. That's the chessboard. <laughs> you can look at the CSS. Um, the board uh, has a border. Oh, yeah, we're using CSS grid, which is pretty fun. Um, if you take a look at the element inspector, and actually, if you've never used CSS Grid before, this is pretty cool about the element inspector. Um, if you take a look at an element, wait, where is? Oh, maybe is this? Is that a Firefox thing? This has a display grid. Usually, usually you'll see like the the grids Blake broken down. Oh, there it is. Oh no, no, that's each individual element. No, that is showing me CSS Grid. Yeah, you can see kind of like the outlines, so it like shows you where that element is laid out in the grid. So I'm using Firefox. I, maybe I'm thinking of Chrome. There's like a really cool CSS grid inspector. I don't know, but click on the grid tag and it'll break it down. Oh, look at that. Yeah. And so um, what's interesting about this is if like if you look at the, the, the source of the elements, it's li literally just a parent element with 64 children. And then using CSS grid, we automatically put it in the right place. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It breaks it down. It like highlights what each of the different cells is. Um, so that's fun. Now, what do we want to do? We want to put pieces on the board. Um, so um, uh, I was looking at this yesterday. Uh, Wikipedia Commons has some like open source chess SVGs. Wikipedia chess SVG. Um, oh, no, uh, chess pieces. This is the one. Yeah, yeah. So we can we can grab these SVGs and then just put them on the right square. Um, but I think the other thing is we'll add chess.js, so that will tell us where the pieces are, and then wherever a piece is, should it should appear using this. I mean, we could use Unicode. Um, I've had an issue. Like the the only thing is it may appear different on different devices. But yeah, th there actually are uh, Unicode uh, chess pieces. Um, I think the main issue is like that's supposed to be white, and then if I look at the black chess king, doesn't look that much different. I mean, I guess it does. It's not outlined, <laughs> but I think I think we're just going to be doing the the SVGs. 
Oh, that's good to hear, Blink. Yeah, yeah. Um, a quick aside, Advent of Code is super fun. If you go to adventofcode.com, you get a new coding challenge every day throughout the month of December. Well, up until December 25th. Um, and it's fun. Fun. Check it out. Exclamation mark Advent in the chat will get you a link. Iconify has a good chess icons. What's Iconify? Oh, material design chess icons? That could be interesting. Um, chess knight, chess queen. That, like these are really clean because they're like nice and flat. That that uh, knight is a little too abstract for me. This is supposed to be a knight. I think we're just we're just gonna use these. We're gonna use these. Um, and I think we can actually just link directly to the SVGs. Um, like uh, this. Can we view the file? Share or embed this file. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, first of all, let's get chess JS added to my code, and then we'll figure out where to put the pieces. And from that point, we'll we'll pick the images and things like that. All right, this is my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. <clears throat> Yeah, I will say that so far this year's advent of code seems uh, much more approachable than last year. Last year got really complex. You're basically building a, a a compiler, a computer interpreter thingy from scratch. Uh, it got pretty complex pretty quick. This year is very approachable. Um, okay, I want to get this from a CDN. Let's see if we can if we can do that. Um, uh, JS deliver is a thing. Yeah, I mean, I figured it out. Like you can look at my uh, my my leaderboard for uh, last year's advent of code, but the thing is, um, uh, at a lot of the challenges last year built off of the int code computer here, and uh, I didn't implement it in a very performant way. And so for later challenges, my code would just run for ever, forever because the encode, encode computer that I implemented earlier wasn't actually that fast. I don't know. I, I got a few days done, but I don't know. Um, all right. Uh, we need to find chess.js on here. Here it is. Um, can we just link to the JS file? It literally exposes a global variable called chess. Uh, can we find like an ESM build, like a, a module build? Uh, as far as I know, there are no prizes, but they do have a leaderboard. Chess functions, React chess, chess dash JS. Um, what open source project would I suggest for a beginner? You mean uh, like contributing to an open source project? It varies. Um, I made a video a long time ago um, about how to contribute to open source. Uh, this one. And in this video, I talk about how you can find projects to contribute to. Um, there, There's a a breakdown of the video in the description because it's pretty long. So you can check that out. Yeah, I, I've never made it on the official leaderboard because you basically have to be the, one of the first 100 people to complete the problem uh, to get on the advent of code leaderboard. Uh, this is fine. We're just going to add this. It's going to add a global variable uh, called... I think it's going to add a global variable called chess, uh, which is fine. Oh, here we go. If type of exports does not equal undefined, if type of uh, let's let's see, maybe I sh maybe I can import this. Um, okay, so we have the CDN link um, inside of board.js. We're going to attempt uh, attempt to import this. So import chess from that, and then um, I think I need to do something like this. Okay, uh, let's see if that actually gives us back a chess variable. This is fine. <laughs> here, no, here. <laughs> this is fine. Um, let's see what we get in the console. Uh, import not found default. 
So I may be able to do uh, import star as chess from that. Hey, we got ourselves a chess thingy. Uh, and then it has a module property. Let's just see if we can start to try to use some of the functions. Um, oh no, you have to you have to destructure it. So import star. Is this the right syntax? Let's call this chesslib. And then we'll just log chesslib.chess. Undefined. Chesslib.module? Undefined. <laughs> what are some of the functions available to us? Uh, you can create an instance of it. We'll figure this out. Um, Import chess as chess lib. Well, uh, oh, I guess that, okay, because because there is no default export, we should be able to do that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, well, see, the issue is they didn't write their module in the right way. Import not found chess, which is why I had to do import um, star as chess. And then when I log it, I'll show you what the weirdness is. When I log it, it just has the uh, symbol module. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, yeah, you're you're right. There there are some things that basically wrap modules um, to work in the browser. JSPM is one of them. How do I search uh, dev? Chess.js. Isn't there like Pika as well? Pika.dev? Move the web forward. Oh, they changed their name. Skypack. Okay. Uh, Chess.js. Here it is. Um, beautiful. This is what we want. Hopefully it works. <laughs> What's up, Estee Enix? I feel like it's been a while. Hopefully you're doing okay. Um, import chess from that. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Um, there it is. Nice. Nice. Okay, awesome. So uh, good on you, Skypack. And so for those of you that haven't heard of this before, it used to be called Pika, but now it's Skypack, and it's also f similar to JSPM, but basically what they do is they take modules that are published on like NPM and they make them so they that they um, They basically rebundle them so that they're importable <laughs> Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, okay, so um, Skypack, okay, so uh, we create an instance of chess and basically um, Whenever we init I think is when we'll create an instance of chess. So uh, this creates the board, and then I can say something like this dot chess equals uh, a new chess. Um, and then let's just log the PGN. Let's see what happens. This dot chess dot PGN. Empty string. Beautiful. Uh, so we just have to tell it when you want the initial position. Um, there's a clear, there's a fin, in checkmate. Um, I don't think I want to load a fin. Can't I just say, like, go to the initial? Hey, King Rapula, how's it going? Uh, initial? Reset. Reset the board to the starting position. This dot chess dot reset. Oh, well, I guess maybe it's in the, <laughs> it's in the, the thing where... If a chessboard is in the initial position, the fence string is empty. Yeah, I think that's the case. Let's just go with that. Um, okay, what I want to do is I want to I want to know where all the pieces are on the board. Um, so that's clever. Yeah. Oh, we have dot ASCII. Oh no, we have dot board. Beautiful. So I think dot board will give us what we need because dot board will give us an array of length 64. Um, oh, the monitor came back, didn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Razor. <laughs> I'll have to fix that. But uh, board should give us an array of length 64, and then we can just um, 
correspond to square with the given board. Um, so let's see, this dot chest dot board. I'll fix the monitor in just a second. Would you look at that? Oh no, it's an array of arrays, which is fine. We can work with that. Um, but that tells us for a given square, what is the type and what is the color? And then I would guess like in the second row, all of these are null or they don't have anything. Oh no, pawns, pawns in the second row, of course, but the third row should have nothing. Yeah, because that's an empty on a starting board. Okay, all right, give me a second. We're gonna fix the, um, fix the monitor. Well, the monitor is technically, on, it's on a swivel stand, uh, dot flat. Thank you, Avi. So f instead of giving us uh, an eight by eight, um, let's see. And that should give us a an array of length 64. Not a function. Um, oh, this is an array method that flattens the array. There we go. <laughs> I totally forgot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how long has that been? Um, has that been in JavaScript? Flat since January, about. Oh no, it's been in Firefox since 2018. Well, that's cool. The more you know. So uh, this this array uh, this this method flat is just built into JavaScript now. And it basically flattens an array. And I believe it just does it um, one level deep. Oh, no, you can specify the depth. Oh, <laughs> fancy. OK, um, great. But now we have an array of length 64. That gives us, uh, that gives, yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. So um, I think we'll, like, we'll just set the board. Let's just set the board. Let's say this dot board equals this. And then um, uh, we can have a method on the board that's like get, get square or something like that. And so the square can basically ask the board for what piece is on it right now. I think that's what we want. So something like uh, get square. Um, in this case, just pass, just pass in the index, just pass in the index, and then we'll just return, uh, this dot board at that index. And that'll give us the info about the square. Why can't I delete a message I send in chat? You should be able to, Chad. Uh, the function to flatten is literally called flat. I, does, does the flat method have anything to do with, uh, with smoosh, the smoosh gate? Uh, yeah, hashtag smooshgate. <laughs> so this is actually really funny. Um, well, I guess it's different than array.flatten. I don't know, but um, for some reason, they didn't want to... Uh, well, I know the reason. There was a very popular library that implemented a flatten function, uh, and it, it polluted the array prototype. And then they were going to introduce this function... But they didn't want to call it flatten because of that library. That's very popular library, and so they su uh, suggested to call it smoosh instead of flatten. I don't know. <laughs> if you want to read up on some JavaScript dra uh, JavaScript dra drama, okay. Uh, I think we're on the right track here. So um, uh, we we say get square, and then we pass in the index, and it, and it gives it to us. Now I think the square. Uh, right now, it only knows about the rank in the file, but we should store. Why not just store the index on the square? So uh, a square also gets access to its index. So that way, we don't have to convert using the rank and file. So a square knows its index. Um, and I think we should pass in the board as well to the square. So now the square knows uh, how to ask the board for uh, what's on that given square. Um, yeah, so this also takes in the board. This dot board equals board. And then um, it, 
Is this OOP? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're using we're using classes. We have objects, but um, I say yeah because I haven't really thought this through. So, but some of it's going to be a bit jank until we figure out what the API is actually going to be. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna do this before we create the cells, so that way the board exists. Like there is. It knows what it is, and that way, inside of the square constructor, we can we can call this function, and it will have the current state of the board. So we should be able to say, um, um, I don't know. I guess if we just have like a an update function, and it it just calls uh, this dot board dot get square with this dot index. Something like that. And then it knows what it should be. And then update sets uh, the contents. Um, and so if we look back at that array, am I am I still logging it? Well, it doesn't matter. The, the objects in there have a property uh, piece, I believe. So if we just say, um, this dot element dot text content equals current dot piece. Um, and whenever we create an instance, we update it. We should now get the pieces. Beautiful. <laughs> Can't access property piece of null. Okay, that's fine. So uh, basically, um, let's say if current is a thing, then uh, set it. Otherwise, we set it to the empty string. And apparently piece is not a thing. Um, is it type? Let's just log what current is. Uh, type. So this is it. Watch. Are you ready? We're going to have a chessboard set up in the right way. Ta-da! <laughs> so it's got, it's got all the right types and stuff. So now what we need to do is we can take the type and the color and then just map that to an image and display the image on the on the square. Um, so let's get that going. Um, if I just copy image location, does this give me the actual? No, that gives me a PNG. Um, nope. There might be a, that, that actually, I'm interested in that, Nate, so I'm just gonna search for it. So chess font. Somebody might have created like a web font that has all the chess pieces in it. Um, true type chess fonts. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, description rules of use. Here's the thing. These these are these pieces are ugly to me. Like I actually I re I really like the uh, the th these Creative Commons, um, we're not Creative Commons, these are uh, Wikipedia Commons ones. Sorali, eight month resub, thank you very much. Uh, okay, click the icon rather than copying them. Okay, I click the icon, um, and then what about this? Does this give, well, then see, that's just a really big PNG. I kind of want the SVG, because the SVG will scale infinitely. Uh, download original file. Uh, view in browser. There we go. That's the one. So the nice thing about SVG is, uh, I mean, I can't zoom in any further, but um, be because it's vector, it's going to be able to scale. So um, let's create a mapping of piece, type, and color to uh, to image. To image. Um, so let's call this uh, pieces.js. Um, Or uh, export is just is this is just gonna be an object. It's kind of like an enum, um, and so the object will have like uh, black king, bk Burger King, and then that will map it to the image like that. Uh, oh, we don't need to wrap this in quotes. And I believe that's that's the right. Like the type is k for king, right? And the color is b. So then we can just ask this uh, thing for uh, its image. So uh, inside of square, let's import the pieces. Quick stretch. 
Oh, okay, yeah. I'll, I seen you. Uh, you you pasted that link a couple of times, so I'll, I'll click it. Um, so for the chess pieces. Pretty cool. Did they? Um, is Pacifico the chess font? Are they drawing the chess pieces with CSS? Or no, no, no. I think it's the chess. It's a, literally a chess font, right? No. No. How are they doing this? Oh, no, no, they're just using the Unicode values. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Using Unicode. And Roger, thank you for that two-month resub. Uh, I mentioned it. I don't want to use Unicode. So, okay, let's keep going. Yeah, they're just using Unicode. So import pieces from uh, pieces. Um, uh, Pieces.js. And then we'll uh, get rid of that linter error. It's useful, but it's not. It doesn't look that great, and these pieces look great. So, um, uh, with this, we get the type and the color, and so we'll say uh, piece equals pieces at um, current dot. How did we do it? We did color and then type. So that's the image, and we'll say if there is an image, we're gonna put it on the element. Um, else, um, we just put the text there for now. Um, and this is the let's call this the image URL. And um, I, mean, I guess technically, I could do something like this: new image, and create an instance of an image. And I believe that'll just let me append it. To the element. Let's see if that does that if that works. Um, and so we'll say this dot element dot append the image. Um, and we should get the chess king on there. No, we don't. Um, Image constructor takes dimensions. Well, uh, because it's an SVG, um, it should just load, right? Uh, color and type. Need to add the source. Well, I thought you could just pass it in like this. Let's just make sure we're getting it. We're not even getting it. Null. Oh, it's a, it takes, I see, it takes the width and the height. I see, and then you set the source. All right, forget it, forget it. We're not gonna, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna even gonna do that. We're just going to uh, dynamically create an image element. The browser, the browser will cache the, the downloaded SVG. So let's just call it image URL. Um, and then we'll create an image. So an image is um, document create element uh, with image. And then the image source is going to be the image URL. And then we're going to append the image. This should work. We'll get like a, I believe we'll get like a tiny little, tiny little king. There he is, tiny little chess king. Um, and I guess if we find. Uh, the image, we also want to set the text content to nothing. Where'd it go? Would you look at that? Now let's style it. Um, so we'll basically just say the square image should have a, a width of 80%. Oh, no, no, square image will have a width of 80% and a height of 80%. So the, the square image will take up more of the, the square. Um, like this. Width, no, we'll do 90. 90% height, 
90%. Nice, look at that. Okay, now check this. Uh, when we resize the page, the image should resize with it too. Beautiful. Beautiful. We could do a CSS invert, but I'm just going to grab the SVGs for um, uh, for the white pieces as well. This is vanilla JavaScript. Yep, we're not using... The only library we're using right now is Chess.js, which is telling us where the, pe the pieces should be on the page. Um, I like what you're saying, Andrew. So it, it'll look a, a bit nicer. Just new image like that. Should still work. Yeah. Great. Um... And yeah, I think uh, we don't we don't even want to set the for now we don't want to set the text content to file and rank, and then that way we don't have to reset it to be anything. This is fine. Okay. Uh, specify width to keep apps aspect ratio. I think you're right. I just assumed it would have been a, a, a square, but you're right. If it's not a square, that'll make sure that it maintains aspect ratio. No, I'm not using any Vim key bindings. Uh, I'm just using um, built-in keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. Um, okay. Now we do the tedious work of finding the URLs for all of the images. Um, so um, we'll need a black rook, and uh, let's get get that piece. Yeah, I, so I, we're, we're definitely going to do something with the rank and files. Like, I think what I want to do is uh, there'll be like a setting to toggle it um, where you can uh, toggle it on and then they appear like in the bottom right. Oh, thank you, Murdoch. Did you, did you, go, did you do the dirty work? <laughs> nice. Narbra. Thank you. Pog. Can we, get, can we get some hearts in the chat for Murdoch? Look at that. I just, I get to keep coding. We don't have to do any tedious work today. Um... Thank you, Murdoch. Murdoch, hearts, first try. <laughs> awesome, so uh, yeah, I think this is all we need. There we go. Um, why is this complaining? Oh, we need a comma there and that there. All right, are you ready for this? All I had to do was copy and paste this code and now, and now, we get all the pieces on the board, except the black pieces are hidden on the black squares. <laughs> um, I, guess, I mean, I guess we could, since the, so here's the interesting thing, since they're SVG, we could technically set the outline. Yeah, we could set the outline. Um, oh no, we can't though, because we're actually, we're loading the SVG into an image tag and you can't affect the paths when you do that. We could just change our board instead of being black and white. Uh, we could um, we could use like blue. We also could inline the SVGs. Yeah, maybe we do that. We could write a quick script that like downloads these SVGs into a folder. Let's do that. Let's actually let's literally download these SVG files because that way um, we could uh, we'll actually load them in and we can set the path and stuff like that. Or we could do. How about this? Right. I think I think I'm gonna do that because it'll be fun to write a script. But let's use uh, coding garden green. Um, this green here. This is the official coding garden green, and so now uh, black pieces um, are green. That looks brighter than it should be. But also, I mean, also this that's a chessboard. You can't you can't tell me that's not a chessboard. <laughs> Um, right? I kind of like it. This looks nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. And then the board, what is, uh, what is 444? Um, oh, like a grayish or a darkish color. Well... No, that's like the opposite because now the white squares become black. But I, but I see what you're saying. We we could instead of green, we could have done four four four, which is like a lighter black, and so the pieces would still be visible. However, I feel like for colorblind people, this uh, this would be hard to see. We're gonna go with green. <laughs> We're gonna go with green. Um. Oh. Uh. I'll I'll show you this. Actually, well, where'd my green color go? Um. But what's interesting is if you if you look on um. 
here. So this has the, the standard chess pieces. But what I found is down here, for whatever reason, well, in here they have an elephant and they have a giraffe and a zebra. But apparently there are variants of chess that um, that use these pieces, or like some of the older versions of uh, chess. Um, there's also like a ship, I think, somewhere. Yeah, there's like a ship. Yeah. <laughs> Elephants are used in Chinese chess, and a knight is in Russian as an elephant. Oh, I guess that's true. Um, I was watching a, a master class by Gary Kasparov. It hasn't made me any better at chess, but he did mention that um, knights are called elephants. <laughs> okay. Um, I, how do I get that green color back? back? Oh, there we go. There's my green color. Nice. What's up, John? Welcome to the show. Okay, this is great. I think this is awesome. So I think what, what we could do now um, is get the current state of a game and um, display it here, right? Right? Are you making a chess game in Python? Hmm. I don't know if I can, Mr. Ben Coder. I, I uh, so typically whenever you load an SVG into an image tag, you typically can't. Um, at least I thought you can't adjust the the SVG stuffs. Well, let's try. Did that do anything? I don't think it did anything. And and then the main reason is we're loading the SVG into an image tag. Yeah, I've seen Queen's Gambit. It. It's, it's a good show. Take the white ones and invert them. <laughs> uh, no, so, I mean, I'm going to stick to this. I like the green squares. This is the coding garden. Um, <laughs> technically, we could download all of the SVGs, load the, the SVG in, and then once we load the SVG, we could have set the, the path. But this is fine. Like, if this is all we do today, I'm happy. We put chess pieces on a board. Um... I guess you're right. If we inverted the uh, the white pieces, they would have a a white outline. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> this is fine. Um, let's close all this. I guess. I mean, technically, we could even use like this beigeish color, but I think we're gonna go with green. Green is fine. Now, now, what do we do? Do we just do we just play a game of chess? Um, I think the, so we're going to have to tap into the lead chess API to get the current game being played by the bot. And, um, we will then use the, um, the current game to update this board, right? Drag and drop. Um, Honest, I mean, that would be cool. <laughs> I think it's super interesting that the browser automatically shows like the outline of the element when you like click and drag, but um, uh, I don't think so. I think this is just going to display the current state of the board, right? Right? How would I implement real time one v one? Oh, like uh, like if two people are sitting at the computer and one person wants to move each one, I I think um, first of all we would have to um, allow the pieces to move to a different square. So um, like when I click this piece, I need to show all available spaces and then click the space we want to go to and then move the piece there. Um, there are already libraries that do that. There's like chessboard.js, which can, you can integrate with chess.js. Um, yeah, but if, if we wanted to do real time over the web, you could just use LeeChess because it's open source and you could just host it on a server. Um, yeah. Still missing A through H on the X axis and one through eight on the Y axis. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, we should actually put the labels. I agree. How does it look on Leeches? Also, let's do this puzzle. It's Black's turn to move. Um, what's the best move for Black? We could check. If 
Queen A1? That's what Bad Dobby Fisher says. And their name is really close to Bad or uh, <laughs> to Bobby Fisher. So are they right? Uh, Rook G3. Um, then uh, that would just be a Rook trade, though. Uh, it's Black Black's turn to move. <clears throat> Rook takes G2. Checking the queen. But then it would be a queen trade. Rook check. But if we go here, then the queen just takes. Rook G3. Rook G7. Um... Wait what? Wait what? Is that even possible? <laughs> that's, not, that's not possible. No, it's it's black. It's black's turn to move. <laughs> uh, queen not protected after the rook moves. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. Like if we if we if we move the rook there, then we're like offering a. Uh, I mean, honestly, the they would just take the rook. Um, if I do something like, I think I think that's the no puzzle failed. Okay, that wasn't the right one. <laughs> rook g three, then take the queen. Oh, I see. I see. So if you were saying go here, nope. They don't think that's the, that's the case. Uh, G3, check, take queen. How do we G3 check? Oh. I see. I see. Yeah, because... <laughs> and then they lose their queen. <laughs> this is so hard to watch. Well, then don't watch. Um, okay. Great, great job. The only reason I brought this board up is I wanted to see how they label the ax uh, like the the axes, and it looks like a tiny little letter uh, inside of the squares. So we could do that. Um, I think can I uh, flip flip the board? How do I flip the board? Can't flip the board, but we also could display the rank in the file outside of the board. I don't know. Play against the guy that said Rook G3. No way! They would beat me so bad. <laughs> I am I am not good at chess. Um, yeah, I want to do it outside the board, and actually, I want to label it in both places. So let's just let's do that. That's our next task: is we're going to take the ranks and the files and show them on the outside of the board. Um, okay. So um, on the board. How do I how do we want to lay this out? So right now we're using CSS grid. So this grid is eight by eight. Um, I mean my Lee Chess Elo rating in so I, it varies. If you look at my rating in um, very fast games, uh, it's lower, like nine seventy eight. Uh, in correspondence games, thirteen hundred. Got more time to think about my moves. Um, but like. Blitz and Rapid, I'm only a thousand. And then Bullet, I, I, I can't play Bullet. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, but, but, but yeah, what I'm thinking is we need some elements on the outside. So, like, instead of a border, uh, we basically have um, an element there. I think actually, let's let's see what happens if we do that. So if we. Um, Yeah, two extra rows and two extra columns. I think that's what we want. Two extra rows and two extra columns. Because then we can take those offsetted ones and those are going to be our labels. And then we could also remove the border of the board. Right, so get rid of the border, border so it's just that. And then we add uh, two extra rows and two extra columns. Um, in the board itself. Um, yeah, we would have to adjust the CSS. So right now, the grid template rows and grid template columns um, just says eight rows, eight columns. They should all be the same size. But I guess what we want is um, we want, I don't know, like a 20 pixel column 
followed by eight columns, followed by another 20 pixel column. Oh, thank you, um, heck. <laughs> How's it going? We need to stretch. Stretch. <sighs> Wait, what are we talking about? I think we should apply the same growth mindset we apply to coding as we apply to chess. There's no good and bad, there's only growing. You're right, I'm getting better at chess. <laughs> oh, you're right, we have we have all of these, uh, all of these, I fixed the redemptions, if you didn't notice, I fixed the redemptions, let's, let's do these. An hour ago, thank you, Duanoid, for that posture check. Uh, we'll use this focus mode right now to figure out this column issue. Um, and um, my next thank you, thank you for the stretch as well. <laughs> uh, we got a hydrate from Ask Rolan. Danielle also with a hydrate. Cheers. Let's fill her with a stretch. Also with the posture check. Let's switch legs. Shebza with a hydrate. Thank you very much. And two, four, six, eight. Cheers. All right. I do need a break. I do, but, but, but not right now. Um, we're going to go into eight minutes of focus. And I'm going to um, figure out this labeling. Uh, cool. So I, I think we have like a, a 20 pixel. I guess it doesn't have to be pixel. We could use vmin. What are we doing for the... The square size? How, how did we style everything else? Oh, it's in the JavaScript, but the board, I think, is 90 vmin? Yeah, ni by default, it's 90 vmin. Um, so what's 90 divided by 8? That's 11.25. Um, I don't even know if that's relevant, but 11.25 <laughs> uh, vmin should be the size of the the extra um, rows and columns. It's beautiful. <laughs> so now what we need to do is we need to um, we need to append the uh, the extra rows and columns before we create the board. Done. First try. So before we create the board, we need to add the extra elements so that everything else gets put into the right place. Um, right. Add a dark background color for the body? I'm not opposed to it. Let's do it. So let's just say that the body has a background of 444. Nice. But the board has a background of white. That. Okay. <laughs> um, Let's, let's figure this out. We're in focus mode. Let's figure this out. So I think what I need to do is um, increase the length by 8 times 4, right? And then if we're on the edges, then we create a, a label. Yeah, I think, right? Does that sound like a plan? I think I'm gonna try it. So, <laughs> so we just have 64 plus uh, eight times four because that's how many extra um, extra squares we now have. And um, no, because that's that's gonna mess up our rank and file. Yeah, nine times nine, exactly. But that messes up our rank and file. We'd have to change the math to be like minus one or something like that. What if, what if, um, we just have, oh, the tree is on fire. Nice drop, nice drop. <laughs> I don't know how I want to handle this. I mean, I could just have easily uh, like labeled the, like if it's on the, actually, you know what, let's do this. I got a plan. Instead of this extra 
we're just gonna put the labels inside of the, the squares. That's all I'm gonna do. <laughs> cool, so we're back to a regular chessboard. I'm just gonna put um, here like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna put them on the edges. Put them on the edge, edges. Um, so, and I, I guess I could just do that inside of the square itself. So, um, if the rank is equal to, uh, wait, what is the rank? The ranks are the rows. So like A. So if, if the rank is equal to A or, uh, G, right? How does chess work? then um, display the text. H? Is that, yeah, it only goes up to H, right? <laughs> so uh, if this dot rank, uh, let's just do the, 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 the bottom row. So if this dot rank is equal to A, we're gonna log this dot rank and this dot file. All right, here we go. Um, oh, and let's stop logging the board over here. Yeah, we just added the chess pieces like a few minutes ago. Um, why is the rank? Oh, is it lowercase a? How did we code the? No, it's a file. I'm doing the wrong thing. If the rank equals uh, one. Yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so if the rank is equal to one, we're going to display the file. Um, so... Uh, let's call this label. Uh, we'll just create a little span. Label.textContent is equal to um, the file, like that. And then we'll just append it to the element, uh, the label. Now we'll add a class to it. So labels class list. Let's add label. And let's just set this to position uh, absolute to be in the bottom right. I can do this. So uh, the square itself will have a position relative so that the square's label can have a position uh, absolute. with uh, bottom zero, right zero. Ta-da! <laughs> Finally! Okay, so that's that's beautiful. Um, we actually wanna set the color to always be the same thing, so the color will just be black. Um, and we'll make it, we'll give it, a, get a little, give it a little bit of breathing room. So 0.5 rim. Yeah, we'll reduce the font size as well. Um, I guess we'll do it in, according to vmin. Yeah, we'll do one vmin. See how small that is. It's too small. Two vmin. And we'll lower it a little bit. So bottom 25, 0.25. Yeah. 0. 0.2. I guess it's okay. <laughs> do we want it to be in the bottom left? Uh, let's do it in the bottom left. And we could, we technically, you're right, we could bring this, the pieces down a little bit, make those 80%. Nah, I don't like it. That's too small. 85? Bottom left, bruh. <laughs> um, yeah, bottom left makes sense. 
And we'll push it in a little bit more. So left 0.25. Prefect. Yeah, and then uh, the Z index of the image should uh, be like a billion. So that way it's always on top. Perfecto. Yeah, that's great. So now um, if the rank is equal to one or the rank is equal to uh, eight, we should display it. Yeah, would you look at that? Let's try lowercase. Uh, we could do that in CSS, which is nice. Uh, text transform, lowercase. Um, let's try a lighter black. Why lowercase? I don't know. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I think you're right, though. We should only put it on the bottom. We're only going to put it on the bottom. Put the top rank eight ones at the top of the square. Oh, I like it. Cool. Um, so we'll have a different selector. Um, square label top. And instead of... Um, Uh, bottom one, we'll do top one. Uh, how do we reset the bottom to be initial? I don't know, but um, let's say if rank equals eight, unset. Okay, I'll, I'll do it to unset. So if the rank is equal to eight, then we're going to add the top class. Label, top. Oh, uh, like that. Nice. Right? I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> this is fine. No, that did it. Thank you, uh, Clash. I don't know if I've ever used on set before. This is fine. Um, does it look okay, though? It's fine. Let's add the 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 ranks. Looks great. Well, thank you, Shepsa. Thanks for the, the reinforcement. Um, okay, so if the um, if the rank equals one or the rank equals eight, great. And then, yeah, maybe we'll change the font. Uh, if the file uh, equals a or H then we want to display um, the rank and if the file equals uh, H we're gonna say that it's on the right um, And let's call this the uh, rank label, and this is the file label. So I do remember when class lists didn't exist. You had to basically create your own computed string with class names in it. Um, this is the file label. And then we need the rank label. Rank, rank. Uh, the rumbling sound is my furnace, which is literally right behind the camera, but it's pretty cold here, so I'm gonna leave it on. Um, did I call this right? I did call it right. Okay, so um, uh, the position is going to be at the top and on the left. And on the right, it's going to be at the right. Beautiful. 
<laughs> well, thank you, uh, Arlis, uh, uh, O Larcino. Um, okay, so... I mean, I am wearing a shirt, you're right, but it, it is still technically cold. Okay, so the numbers are there. That's great. They're just not in the right... Uh, they're not in a very good spot. Um, left on set. Cool. That's decent. The only issue is there's some overlap here. No letters on top and numbers only on one side, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's how other chessboards do it. Let's do it that way. I agree. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I agree. Uh, so in this case, we don't even add it to the top. It only adds on the first one, and then we'll only add it on the, the H file. Um, rank one file. No, I'm going to put it on the right. I think it should be on the right. Yeah, and yeah, I think we'll, we'll so we'll add the the border back. Originally, I got I got rid of the border because I was going to figure out a way of uh, putting the ranks in the files outside of the board, but my my brain couldn't comprehend it, so um, we didn't do that. But yeah, the board should have a border two pixels solid black, or uh, ten pixels solid black. Huh? Uh, uh, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. These, uh, yeah, um, two five. Five pixels. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. I'm proud of this creation. Impeccable. <laughs> All right, uh, let's play a game of chess. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm going to start up the bot, and uh, we're going to play chess against Twitch chat. Now, um, it's not going to be a real-time game, because I want to figure out how we're going to get the current state of the game so that I can re display it on this board. And I don't know how easy that's going to be. Um, yeah. And actually, I feel like the, the letters should be on the right. What do you all think? Yeah. So uh, right now, right now the pieces can't move. I mean, that's just the browser doing like drag drop. But we're gonna tap into the Lee Chess API. So whatever happens on the board on Lee Chess will be reflected on this board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> who's ready to play chess? Um, let me go ahead and change my category. And uh, we'll play a chess game. I do have to update the bot, though, because right now the bot uh, picks a move after 60 seconds. I think we'll make it, like, five minutes. <laughs> um, D4. Well, uh, you, you got to wait. You got to wait for the, uh, the thing. So um, here's what we're going to do. I am going to challenge Samwise Gardner to a game, and we'll start up the chess bot. Oh, well, thank you, Cream of Heat. <laughs> uh, oh, did I call it Lee? I called it Lee Chess Bot. Yeah, Lee, Lee Chess Twitch Bot. And if we just start this up, it should just be listening for challenges. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill it, because um, right now, it automatically makes a move after a minute. Um, and we don't want that because we, we want to be able to uh, write codes and stuff. So um, let's change it to be five minutes. I'm curious if I have any other hard-coded 60s. No, that should be the only spot. So you have five minutes to make a move. Is that going to give me enough time to like research the API and all that good stuff? 
I don't know. We'll do it. So you have five minutes to make a move. I'm going to start the bot. Um, here. Oh, you can't. It's... The Christmas tree is hiding it. Um, and then we're going to play. Uh, well, thank you, Rhino, for the much love. Thank you for the 500 bits. So we're going to ch challenge Samwise Gardener to a standard game, Unlimited. Let's go. So uh, if the bot's working, it automatically accepts the challenge, which is great. Um, it's my turn to go because I'm white. So I'm going to play this move. And now it's your turn. So in the chat, you can type exclamation mark play. Um, and you need to do... Uh, you have to specify the square you're coming from and the square you're going to. So, like, if you want to move this, you would say uh, E7 to E5. Or E7, E5. All one word. Like that. Like, uh, uh, like this. Play E7, E5. Like that. I think. Oh no, it's move. Sorry, it's not move. it's not play, it's move. Move E7 <laughs> E5. <laughs> I wrote the code, I'll figure this out. Um, there you go. So that I you, you can sort of kind of see it, but E7 to E5 has um, four votes. A8 to A6 has one vote. I guess that's the, is that the London system? Uh, A Wait. That's not a valid move. <laughs> A8 to A6? Yeah, that's not a valid move. You would do A7, A6? Um, <laughs> but you can you can vote on a move. At, in five minutes, the move with the most vo votes, the bot is automatically going to do. But uh, while you're voting, what I need to figure out is how do we get the current state of this specific game? Now, technically... Um... Uh, the, the pieces won't move yet. The pieces won't move until the timer is up, and it'll be after five minutes. And Bradford Hamilton, thank you very much for the 300 bits. Do I know you? I think I know you. <laughs> thank you for the bits. <laughs> um, it is a long time, but the main reason it's a long time is because I have to figure out the API. So here's the deal. Right now, this chess bot um, is just running in a Node.js process. But I think... Uh, you, you all are black. You are, all are the black color. But I think what I need to do is I kind of need to wrap this. Oh, nice, Bradford. Thanks for being here. It's been a while. Ho hopefully you're doing okay. Um, uh, yeah, I can flip the board for you so you all can analyze. <laughs> I believe there's a flip. Don't I have a flip the board? How do I flip the board? I have no idea. Press F. <laughs> Is that a joke? It's not a joke. I was like, press F in the chat. No. Okay. You all are playing as the black pieces. Um, now, this is just a node process that's listening for moves. Um, and it <laughs> it's it's just sending those. But what I'm thinking is if we I might need to wrap this in like a, a WebSockets API. So that way, uh, this board over here could listen to that WebSocket API and know when moves are placed. It could also listen for what has been voted on and it can, it'll show um, and highlight what people are voting for. So I think I need to do that. Um, and that's not going to be trivial. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta set all of this up. Um, does that, oh no, the, the moves don't change. So in, in chess, the white pieces always start uh, on row one and uh, the chess, the black pieces always start on row eight. Um, and so, yeah, regardless of flipping the board, the coordinates are always the same. Formal motion to use native sockets. Here's the thing. It, it just takes so much more work. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for the five minutes for the spot to make the move. Um, Actually, I'll yeah, I'll let it make the move. In the meantime, I'll install all of our dependencies. So I'm gonna install Express, um, and I'm also going to install Socket IO. I'm not. I I I really am very much against native sockets. Um, it's just so much more work. So much more work. Yeah, exactly. So that that's that's the goal, Cat Sensei. Is um, I'll I'll be able to highlight what 
moves people are voting for. So uh, you'll have a better a better idea of what's happening. Because for a lot of people, you have no idea what this notation means. And so I'll I'll literally highlight E7 to E5 so that you know that that's what people are voting for. Um, but it's going to take some work. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this bot in an express API so that my front end can listen for moves and, and things like that. It's true, SQL Gordster, but uh, I'm in a hurry. I'm always in a hurry. <laughs> like I, I basically, I basically, I should be going back to work right now, but I'm not. Um, all right, let's rename this to bot.js, and then we'll just set, set up a little Express API. So we've got our index. We're gonna bring in Express. Uh, it moved, did it? Oh, it did move. <laughs> so that was five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm just going to kill the bot because uh, now that I figured out what I need to do, I got there's a whole lot of code that I need to write. So the bot's going to die for now. Great move, everyone. Good first move. <laughs> Let me get the API up and going, and then we'll go from there. So uh, we need an Express app. And actually, we need to bring in Socket.io. Um, the it's uh, the 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 bot is actually pretty resilient. If I start it back up, it knows whose turn it is and all that. So, um, okay, we need socket IO. <sighs> Checkmate in ten moves. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, and then uh, we also need to bring in uh, the HTTP core module. Um, and Lee Geek, thank you for that sub. Um, okay, it's I'll have to look at the docs, but it's something like uh, we create a server, and then um, do we pass the Express app into it? I think something like that, and then um, let's call this Socket IO. Yep. Okay, something like that, and then uh, we'll say. Like IO is socket IO and you pass in the server? Something like that. And then um, on connection, we get all the socket info. Something like this. And thank you, Savak, for that focus mode. We'll we'll focus while we while we try to do this. Use Dino. <laughs> um, HTTP is a Node.js core module for creating HTTP servers. Um, Behind the scenes, like the Express module would use that and stuff. But basically, we need to create a server so that way we can use it as an Express API and as a WebSocket server. Um, OK. Let's just log uh, connected. Um, great. And now we'll do our basic stuff. So we just have a Git route. Um, and we'll just respond. little message hello world uh, great uh, and then we need to listen on a port so server dot listen we'll grab a environment variable for the port um, and then we'll just say that we're listening Mooly, thank you for that sub two month uh, streak very good very good um, port Port. Port. Uh, lowercase port is going to be process.env.port. So when we're deployed, deployed will have a port variable. Otherwise, um, we use port 4242. So this should start listening. Um, it should be listening for socket connections. Let's see. I think, uh, I think we're there. Listening at 4242. So that should just respond with a JSON object, and it does. Uh, and then we need a socket connection to it. So um, let's get the socket IO client. Uh, and Ocknot now. <laughs> Thank you for the 10 bits. Lost in technology. Um, I forget, what was that site we found? Skypack. Skypack. So let's see if socket IO um, client has a Skypack build. That's the one. Here we go. OK, so now um, on the client side, 
Um, we're going to bring in socket IO. Um, and I mean, I wrote this OOP, like we're creating an instance of the board, but honestly, we're only going to have only ever going to have one instance of the board. But uh, let's just do this. So whenever you init the board, uh, we connect to the socket backend. So um, let's say the, the so uh, this, this dot socket is uh, IO, and then we need to connect to our server. So localhost 4242, like that. Um, OK. So now. Uh, something broke. <laughs> FS does not exist. Well, that's an issue with how this got imported. Um, I guess I probably don't really even need to use Skypack. Can we just, um, grab it from, like, JS Deliver? dist socketio.js I think this will figure it out so um, import io from this so sockets are, are going to be a real time connection um, between our chessboard and the bot so that it can show the moves that are being made <sighs> import not found Import star as IO. All right, IO is not a function. <laughs> Socket IO client JS comes with this. Uh, yeah, but these these are actually two separate apps. So this is just a static file server, and then the other one is a backend app that's not serving up these files. So um, we have to pull it in separately. Import IO. Let's just look at that JavaScript file. Uh, okay, if exports is an object, so actually it's going to do export default. Exports at IO. Yeah, I think that's it, Andrew. Import not found, IO. <laughs> uh, import star as IO. Let's see what we get when we do that. Uh, that gives us an object with... This is what was happening earlier. Maybe we do need Skypack. Import IO... I guess that's what we have. I think we could figure it out with this one. Let's see. Because we want this... Uh, export star from socket.io client. Export default from that. It seems like this should work. But when I earlier when I did this, um, it said it, it couldn't find import. Oh, no, no, no. It's trying to use the FS module. Let's try that. Um, import default as IO? Yeah, I forgot we ran into that issue before. Well, uh, this is client-side code, so it doesn't have FS. It shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> it really shouldn't be this hard. But here's what we're going to do. Uh, instead of importing it like the way we should be able to, uh, we're just going to add a CDN link. This is going to work. Um, I hate to do this, but that's going to add it as a global variable. And then over here on the board, we should have access to IO. We could use parcel. I'm not going to use parcel. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, awesome. So um, the only issue now is it's it's trying to connect to the back end, but the back end is, on, is running on port 4242, which is a different origin. So our back end, we actually need to uh, set up cross-origin resource sharing. For that, I'm just going to add the cores module. Uh, no big deal. Let's bring in cores. Um, and then we use it. 
Cool. So this now should work with the upgrade request for sockets. And actually, I think the other thing I'll do is on the front end, um, I will tell it uh, to only use web sockets. Transports web sockets. Something like that. Uh, let's start the back end back up. Great, back end is running. Front end's here. It's connected, and if in our back end logs, we should see connected, and we don't. <laughs> oh, hey, Wolfie, how's it going? Uh, adding a tag isn't a bad thing. It's just I was trying to do everything through. Uh, yeah, so no, I was watching AlkaStream last night, and he was trying to do a similar thing. Ultimately, loading it as a global variable is uh, the easiest way to go. Okay, our back end should have said that there was a connection. Um, I thought it was like the io.on connected. I think it is maybe. Let's just look at the docs. We have we haven't looked at any docs yet. Um, connection was right. Okay, apparently I was. Oh, well, no, that should that should have been right. So, um, when the server receives a connection, it should just log connected. Okay, so it's there, and then this should connect. You don't see a log though. Um, 404. Oh, that's a, that's for the favicon. Yeah, that's, it just can't find the favicon. All right. Io dot on connection. Yeah, so uh, this is, <laughs> there's multiple things happening here. This is the front end running on port 3010, and the back end is running on port 4242, and the front end is connecting to the back end. I mean, we can look at the the network logs and just see if there is any. There should I mean there should be WebSocket traffic. Here it is. Oh no, that's browser sync. No, it's not connecting. What did I do wrong? Um, I O. With the URL, uh, it broke whenever I did that, so let's not do that. Um, oh! Wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, I, so somebody just mentioned something. I had the wrong protocol. Yeah, it needs to be WS. Yeah, this needs to be WS. Okay. <laughs> Uh, transports should be singular. Okay, so the yeah, we the protocol is WS. Here we go. Uh, same origin policy. Um, I am using cores. Uh, I I don't try out Fastify because I've just used Express for so long and it and it works for me. Um. No, so when you when you enable cores by default, um, it it does access control allow origin star. So th this should be setting that. Um, io dot set origins star. I've never had to do that before. Yeah, course errors usually aren't this bad to figure out. We'll get there. We will get this client connected to this back end. Uh, what if we don't do that? Same thing. Weird. All right, I'll try that. io.set origins. Oh, transports WebSocket. Hey. <laughs> okay. Let's let's double check. So, uh, transport is WebSockets is connecting to localhost forty two forty two. Um, our backend um, is using cores. Okay, and um, it's connected. <laughs> I 
Okay, the the main issue was I said WebSockets instead of WebSocket. That's fine. Okay, so now the chessboard is connected to the back end. Beautiful. Um, there was a support event that just happened. We did it. No, we're not done. That's step one. <laughs> just get it, just get it working. Uh, Aknot now. Thank you for the bits. Who says cores to me is a beer? Like what? <laughs> Okay, uh, almost first try, right? Okay, okay, okay. So the the this board is now connected to our chess bot backend. Beautiful. Um, now what we need to do is this uh, this server needs to be able it needs to have some endpoints where we can get like the current state of the game. Um, so let's see. Um, what is this bot? So, yeah, it just calls a knit. Let's export this. Um, so, this bot file is going to export uh, this init function, so that way we can use it in our API here. So, let's pull in the bot. Like that. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, well, like, create an instance of it, but I, what I want to do is, like, we, we pass it a callback, so that way we can get access to the game state. And with that callback, we can now use inside of connection. So, okay, so what I'm saying is the init function should accept a, a callback, and then we should call that callback with, like, the... Uh, the game state or the emitter. We, we we basically need a way of of taking the bot's state and making it available to the socket connection. Right. Yeah. So we need to send the game state. Um, how am I doing that over here? So. Um, it's a lot of code. We <laughs> we wrote a, we wrote a lot of code here. Uh, make a move. Stream the or yeah. So this creates a. An event emitter for the game. What about returning a promise instead of injecting a callback? Um, a promise can only be resolved once, whereas a callback could be called as many times as we want. And the way this works is uh, it listens for challenges, and then whenever it accepts a challenge or it, it notices that a game has already started, um, then it starts listening for moves on that game. So I don't think it's... a uh, just like a one-time thing. I'll figure this out. Let me try to understand my own code really quick. Uh, <laughs> so start game gets called. Yeah, and then game. Game is here, and this is... Um, uh, this is the... The game... This is listening for game events from... Um, what do you call it? Uh... Leeches from the Leeches API. Um, I guess technically, whenever there's a game event, I kind of, in, yeah, here, like I'm logging it. I kind of just want to send that game event to um, to the socket. So let's, uh, let's do this. Um, I guess lis listeners is an array. This is going to be some hacky code, mainly because I just want to get it working. But this is what we're going to do. So this bot file has a list of all the listeners, right? Um, and then uh, whenever you call init, um, we're going to push that callback into the listeners. Great. And then whenever an event happens, um, like this, we're going to say listeners for each uh, callback. We call that callback with the game event. Like that. So it's hacky. There are better ways of structuring this code, but ultimately what, the, that, what that's going to give me do, what that's going to let me do um, is, uh, so this is going to be the, the game event here. And anytime a game event happens, it, it calls this function. I actually don't want it to call this function. I really just want to do uh, io.emit game state or let's call it game event with the game event. Okay, so anytime a game event happens inside the bot, 
We're going to emit it to the sockets. Um, that, that should be it. Honestly, that should, that should be it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so we were playing chess. Now we're trying to get this chess bot working, but we're, we're about to we're about to play some chess. Um, but here, here is where I can say um, socket on game event. Um, we get the event. Cool. So the chessboard is now listening for game events and it's going to log them here. All right. Um, we're going to restart the server. It should start to listen. Um, and then we'll reset this. Well, I guess the other thing is um, when the a socket connects, we need to emit the current game state. We'll figure this out. But uh, thank you, Nixt, who says, found my channel, can't stop watching every playlist. That's great. This is not a tutorial. This, this is me just trying to hack through it and figure things out. Um, let me just make sure that uh, got event. Let me just make sure that this is at least happening. Listening. Got event. Yeah, yeah, there it is. So um, it got the event. It should have emitted it. Um, and then the board should have gotten the game event. 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 OK. Uh, but I guess also, um, when, it, when it connects, where are we at? Here. When a connection happens, we want to emit the current game state. Uh, current game state. Also, this is not scalable. This will not work for multiple games. Um, it's only going to work on my computer for this one game, And but that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Coding with tons of bugs is better than quick no bugs tutorials. Yeah, I mean, they, they both have their, their merits. Um, but yeah, so um, he will say uh, if current game state is a thing, um, then when that socket connects, we're going to emit that game event. This is the winner. <laughs> this is the winner. Okay, so, um, and then I'll reset the bot. So th this page is technically like connected to the server. It should be able to reconnect. And there we go. There we go. So now the front end gets access to the game state. Um, beautiful, beautiful. So now... Um, this has, uh, type game full. And actually that's the only time I want to, um, set the game state as if the type is game full, but we're on, the, we're, we're on our way. Now that the front end has access to it, we can get access to the moves and then we'll pass these moves into chess.js, which will, and then we'll change where they are on the, on the board. Um, okay. But first of all, <laughs> type is game full. Um, here. So um, if game event dot type is equal to game full, then we set the current game state. Um, all right. And then if it's not that, it's a, it's a, I think it's a state update. Let's see. So connected, got the game state. Um, but in this case, let's say that. Um, uh, so it's my turn to move. So I'm going to attack the pawn here. Now that should have emitted an event. Here it is. Uh, and the type of the event is just game state. <laughs> there's, there's a poop on my tree. Um, awesome. So now that we have, if the type is game state, then we just need to override um, full game dot state. Here we go. So else uh, current game state dot state equals game of it. And if that that's if the game event dot type is equal to um, game state. 
We're, we're getting there. Um, okay. So, um, that's going to emit the game state because something just happened, and then we update the board based on that. Oh, yeah, we, we could create enums all day long. Like I said, this is some hacky code, but... Just watch. <laughs> now, um, actually... What did I just do? So if the game type is full, current game state equals that. If the game t if the game type is that, wait, yeah, hack it together and then refactor, but we'll probably never refactor. Uh, I'm just curious why, um, oh, well, no, this is just the individual game state. This is fine though, honestly, because we have access to moves. And basically what we need to do with moves is we need to, um, update our internal chessboard state to do these moves. Am I meaning to do that on the server? I think so. I don't know. I'm confusing myself. <laughs> but when a connection happens, we're emitting... Oh, no, no, that's why. The, the code hasn't been updated. Yeah, it, it actually should emit the full state. It's It shouldn't emit the, um, the individual state anymore. What I want to see is this bad boy, this big old thing. And now it should do that. Um, okay. Um, that's fine. What I want to do now is I want this board to reflect the actual uh, Lee chess board. This. So let's let's get that going, and we can access uh, event dot state dot moves. Okay. So back on the front end. Um, Event.state.moves is a string of all the moves that have occurred in this particular game. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's awesome, Mark Murdoch. Thank you very much. Um, it's a beautiful favicon. Here we go. Nice. Um, let's just put that here. How do I set a favicon? I don't know. We'll put it there. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, okay. Uh, Event.state.moves is all the moves that have occurred. Oh, he passed the whole favicon code? Oh, it's just an image. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we, can, we need to just get this working. So... Uh, this is a string um, of all the moves. If we if we split it on spaces, um, that's going to give us all the moves. Um, and um, with these moves, um, we need to adjust our internal chessboard state, right? So th this is that chess JS thing, and basically we need to do like uh, chess dot move with each of the moves. I guess we kind of need to keep track of what moves have already happened. I don't know, but first of all, let's pull up the chess.js uh, docs here. Um, and then they have a way of sending a move like this. Um, hello, Al Al Rafe. Welcome to the show. There's a way of passing in the long, long form. I forget what that is. Here we go. Like this. Uh, Chess.move, sloppy. So if you tell it sloppy, it knows how to interpret E2, E4. Um, so it's going to be something like this. Um, but yes, thank you, Rokusol. Let's, let's add that favicon. Hello, uh, Zarexo. Welcome to the show. Nice. Look at that. Look at that coding garden chess icon. Okay. So, um, we have each of the moves. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, we'll go, let's create the chessboard before we get the connection. Um, and then we'll do uh, for every move. So, we have all the moves. We'll say moves dot for each. Oops. 
we just say this dot chess dot move uh with the move and it's sloppy all right that's it done Ta-da! oh <laughs> it didn't work <laughs> So, uh, oh, actually, no, it's because uh, the game event is going to come afterwards. And so after all of the moves, we need to update all of the squares. Um, so, like, for every cell, update the cell. So we'll just call, like, this.update. And we'll create an update function that iterates over all the cells and calls the update. So for each cell, cell.update. Um, so, uh, the update function needs to clear out any previous children. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. That's better. <laughs> so that right now our update function, uh, we only wrote this update function to work the first time. Um, I think I'll just do this dot element dot inner HTML equals nothing. Like whenever we update it, just clear it out. Okay. Great. <laughs> Um, however, it's not actually, oh, 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 not, okay, 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 I got, I got it though. So we, we forgot, we have to do this. So not only do we have to update every cell, we have to update the internal board state to be the state of the board. This is the winner. It's not the winner. Um, let's try again. Yeah, that should work, Wolfie. I'll, I'll make it a little bit better. Um, cannot read property zero of undefined. Oh, because nobody voted for moves. That's fine. Okay, here we go. It didn't work. <laughs> oh no, there it is! There it is! It did it! <laughs> it um, it took a second, but once it connected to the back end, it received the game state, and then uh, and then updated it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think what we need to do. So uh, this is great. It's beautiful. <laughs> But the the only issue is, um, oh, that monitor is back. Man. the the main The main issue here is um, I'm not keeping track of the previous moves, and so when another when we get another game state update here, it's going to attempt to do those moves all over again. Um, so I, I want to like uh, let. Current moves equals an empty string. And hey, Oknot now, thank you for the 10 bits. Don't understand a lot of what you're doing, but you're awesome. Well, thank you. I barely understand what I'm doing, but we're making it happen. <laughs> we're making it happen. Um, so we'll say current moves equals uh, this. Um, and we'll say, well, no. Okay, what I'm thinking is we keep track of the moves that happened before. So um, that's just going to set it. It's going set to set it to be the current moves. But um, before we do that, I would say moves.replace the current state. with no So replace the moves that have already happened with nothing. So that way we only get the new moves. Yeah, so that way we only get the new moves. Um, and after that, we know what the current state of all moves is, right? Yeah, I, I like that. So that's actually a good suggestion from uh, Red Superbat is, so right now I just have literally a game event, which is basically a catch-all, but we could have a separate event for moves. Um, and that way we know to just do that move. We'd also have to update our backend to only send the move that happened though. Perfect. Now, I mean, I think this, honestly, this should work. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in, uh, in JavaScript, um, if you say this and then you replace an empty string with an empty string, it's just the same string. So th this should be fine. So the, the chessboard starts up, we get the current event. Um, currently, it is, yeah, it's simple. We'll keep it simple. Um, uh, 
Uh, it's and actually, let's let's do this. We're gonna lower the uh, the timer for the move. So, uh, chat, you're gonna have sixty seconds to make a move. Um, wait, not yet, not yet. Um, starting now. So um, you can do exclamation mark move, and then the move has to be in this format. So you have to say the square you're coming from and the square that you're going to. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so after 60 seconds, the move with the most votes is going to be sent to Lee Chess. Then we should get a game update event, and we should see it move on um, our on our little game board here, if we did it right. <laughs> um. Right now, G8 to F6 is the most popular move. Um, G8, F6. Let's let's move that that knight out and attack this pawn. Uh, B8, C6 has two votes. B8. Uh, so that's the other one. Protect the attack the pawn or protect the pawn. <laughs> um, uh, but Craigie says, I recently found your channel. Uh, it broke. <laughs> uh, I recently found your channel and I'm really enjoying your content. Do you have any videos where you discuss your development setup? Um, yes, yes. Actually, if you uh, check out coding.garden slash videos, um, click this button and then I have a video from 2020 and an older video where I set up my Mac and I show all the product productivity tools I install and stuff like that. So you can check that out. But uh, we broke it. Cannot access property moves from a, uh, event dot state is undefined. I think I know what the issue is, but if I just refresh this page, uh, it has the current state, which is nice. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna fix it though. Um, cool. I'm learning currently learning React and Node at the same time. Is it a good idea? It depends. If you have coding experience, you could probably figure it out. If you don't have coding experience, it's it's gonna be a lot to take on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me fix the camera <laughs> and then uh, we'll finish this game because I got to get to work. Uh, just a second. Machine gun. Thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Uh, I appreciate you. Okay. Uh, and uh, Craigie with that Twitch Prime sub as well. Thank you very much. You all are very kind. Um, what I think the issue is, our back end is emitting the latest state. Yeah, it's emitting the game event, but I actually want my back end to emit the full state every time. That's that's the issue that we ran into before. Um, right, this is gonna work. Okay, so um, it's now waiting for me to make a move. Um, Right now, I'm going to have to bounce back and forth, but over here, I'm going to make a move, and I am going to protect my pawn here. So if I do that, it also broke. Come on. Oh, I didn't restart the server. <laughs> let, me, let me restart the server. Um, but it's your turn, chat. It's going to work this time. You have uh, you have 60 seconds to vote. Where do you want to go next? You can do exclamation mark move, followed by uh, the move in this format, so the square you're on and the square you want to go to. Uh, G8 to um, F6. Wait, no, no, that was last time. That's no longer a valid move. <laughs> G8, F6, that's already... You can't do that. Um, I think, like, we could add features to this all day long, but um, one thing we need to do is we need to validate that the moves Twitch chat is suggesting are actually valid. Right now, the way it works is it'll just send whatever to the Lee Chess API, but... Um, if it's an invalid move, Lee Chess responds with an error, and then you have Twitch chat has half the amount of time to do another vote. Can we rotate the viewport 180 degrees? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I mean, not on my chessboard because I haven't implemented that yet. Um, but uh, here, okay. So uh, chat moved the uh, the knight, the little horsey, and um, if we did everything right. That's great. <laughs> um, no errors in the console, and it actually updated on this board, so that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's dope. Okay, so the other thing is, if I make a move, um, 
Let's go here. It should update over here, and it does. Wow. <laughs> Be beautiful. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, yeah, and uh, thank thank you for that. If you click this link, uh, you can actually see the see the chessboard on your screen. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, so that's that's the next step. That's the next next the next place I want to take this is whenever it's it's uh, oh actually <laughs> actually let me let me kill this. Uh, uh, whenever it's chat's turn to vote, I want to highlight on the board uh, where people are voting. So you get an idea of what chat is thinking. Um, that's the next step. <laughs> so I'm going to get that working and then I have to go because I, I should, I should honestly, I should be working right now. But um, okay, if we go back to the back end, um, whenever chat votes, where do we handle that? Um, here. Move choices. So this is when the move choices get updated. Um, so I'm going to do something like this. Um, whenever chat votes and the, the votes are updated, um, we're going to emit an event where the type is... Uh, votes and uh, cho choices is that yeah um, yeah so r right now it actually I, I am keeping track of all of the votes and you can see how many people have voted on on what um, but right now you just see it in my terminal which isn't very nice uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that and try to represent it on the chessboard um, Cool. So that's going to emit an event where type is votes. And then on the front end, um, we'll say if event.type is equal to votes, do this. Otherwise, do all the stuff that we were doing before. Yeah, I think honestly, that's I think that's all I'm gonna do right now is just put it on the page. Let's uh, let's just get the votes on the page itself, um, and let's log it. Uh, event dot choices. Uh, we'll restart the server. Cool. So, um, if you all just make a vote, I should at least see it logged in the console. Maybe. <laughs> so if you do exclamation mark move, yeah, here we go. Uh, but I'm not seeing those events. Oh. Um, something broke. Um, so... Yeah, well, the 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 page needed to connect to the backend server. It, it should it should be pretty fast, but okay. Um, uh, when a vote has happened, we call each listener. So, oh, that's uh, yeah. So the type is not going to be game state in this case. The type is going to be votes. So it should still emit it. We should still emit. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Um, if the game event dot type is equal to uh, votes, then we need to just emit the game event. Otherwise, we're gonna emit the full game state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do this. I mean, I so like I said, this code is hacky. I should really just come up with different socket event names, but this is fine. This is totally fine. Um, cool. So that's going to emit the votes. And then on the front end, um, if the type is votes, we should just see those emitted there. Okay. Let's try again. Start it up. Um, refresh the page. People are voting. <laughs> and, I'm not, and I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> um... Actually, did the page need to be connected before I start it? 
No. Um, votes came in before the connection was logged. Yeah, but it should emit on every single vote, and it emits the entire list of votes. Um, I mean, let's just log the event here. It's possible that I mess things up. So that should log every event coming into the front end. And then on the back end, uh, if the type is votes, emit the event itself. Should work. Start the back end. Um, and then refresh the front end. Put update inside the else? What? Oh. Something's happening. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna kill I'm gonna kill the server. Actually, it, it for whatever reason it took a second before the client was able to connect. But when it did connect, um it was able to get the votes. Cool. Okay, I, I think we're on the right track here. There's just some weird issues where it's not connecting immediately. But um one thing is uh, votes is a map. It's a map from um, move to number of votes. And for whatever reason, that's not able to be serialized. So let's just do uh, move choices dot uh, entries. Let's serialize it before we send it to the client. Um, and then back on the front end, we should just be able to get the votes here. Um, I, I am, I am, I thought I was doing that. So on, on my back end here, whenever we get a socket connection, I do emit the current game state. For whatever reason, it's taking a second for the client to connect. I don't really know why. Um, but here, start up the back end. It's chat's turn to play. If we refresh this page. Yeah. So if you can see that the client isn't connecting immediately for whatever reason. Um, hey, Larry, how's it going? Oh, and then finally it connects. And then, um, yeah, so we got the game event. If someone just votes really quick, so if you do exclamation mark move uh, followed by any move, we should see it here. There it is. There it is. So we see that votes um, is an array of the, the, the moves and their current number of votes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, and Larry, I got into uh, more recently. I started playing chess more often because of uh, Queen's Gambit as well. Yeah, this is this is Twitch plays chess. But what I'm trying to do is uh, visualize people's votes on the board. So right now, people, well, I'm, I'm I keep killing the bot, but people are uh, are voting. And what I want to do is I want to highlight the squares on the board that people have have voted for. Um, and we we built this bot a few weeks ago. This is this actually sends moves to um, the Lee Chess API. So. Uh, I'm technically playing against this bot, but the bot only makes moves that are voted on by Twitch chat. Um, okay. Because I have to go, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over these votes and just highlight the squares on the board that have been voted for. Mate in two for white. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Black could definitely defend against that. <laughs> Thank you for that focus mode, uh, Murdoch. We're going to get this. We're going to get this. I at least want to highlight the squares. That's what I want to do. I want to highlight the squares. Um, so uh, on the front end, can the move be backwards? Uh, you mean the move that you're voting on? No, because this string here... The move string gets sent to the Lee Chess API, and it needs to be in a specific format of the square you're going from to the square you're going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're in focus mode. Uh, okay, so we have the choices. I think what I need to do is um, we need to find the specific cell with that rank and file and tell it that it should be highlighted. 
yeah so the higher the vote number the higher the higher the opacity um and uh yeah this is an array of arrays so we can iterate over choices so for each choice um i guess we could we could destructure it to be the the move and the number of votes um and uh yeah i think we're only accepting moves that's from square to square so you're never going to have like like the ex notation like pawn takes square so um we could say uh, from two is move dot well match a regular expression that gets uh, the first one, which is uh, a through h, um, and then uh, one through eight. So this should be from n2. Um, right? Is that right? <laughs> that seems right. Um, so because ba basically the, the move um, uh, should have those two things. Uh, so mat match accepts a regular expression. And, and a regular expression is like its own nested language of how to match against things. Um, but this says match any character a through h. Am I getting that right? H is the big yeah. H is the as high as we can go. <laughs> um, match anything a through h. Match any number one through eight, uh, and that's a group. So that'll be from. Um, and then uh, match. Yeah, I think this should work. It, for, it, we should at least see from two and number of votes. Uh, right now we're we are normalizing it, so all of the moves are always lowercase. So it should be uh, that should be fine. Okay, restart the chess bot. <laughs> Refresh this page. Uh, for whatever reason, it takes a second for the. I don't know why this is. I don't know why this is, but um, the the my client still hasn't connected to my back end here. But yeah, you all can vote. You can do exclamation mark move, followed by uh, a valid move. Um, I'll, I'll let you look at this. This is the current state of the board. Um, can't establish a connection to the server at localhost 4242. What? Why not? Why the heck not? I think the world is broken. I've, I've been watching Alka stream. Shout out to, to Alka. Um, and he's been having issues with WebSockets as well. It's like a local issue, but I, I, I don't know what's going on here. Socket server is running and listening. And this is going to attempt to connect to it, but it can't connect for whatever reason. I mean, I guess I, I could do I could do long polling. Um, so right now I'm forcing it to use WebSockets. It should still work if I don't force it to do WebSockets. Um, front end. Here. Um, here. Let's just say, hey, you, you connect to that back end however you want. Uh, maybe, maybe that'll fix it. Okay, so start the back end. Uh, refresh. No, and then Cores kicks in. Uh, which is why we forced it to use WebSockets. <laughs> if it would just work, that'd be great. All right, so we'll go back to using WebSockets. Please just connect. Just connect to my back end. Um, nobody's mentioned it, but I think like the color of my skin has changed throughout the stream. And I think it's because that window uh, has light coming into it. 
Okay. Um, <sighs> sockets, man. How do they work? Okay, let... <laughs> Well, it's connected before. It absolutely has connected before. Just for whatever reason, now it it doesn't want to connect anymore. Um, but we could do this, and then let's just make our back end work with cores. Um, yeah, I'll try a new port. Actually, actually, that's a great idea. What if there's like another thing on my machine listening on that port? Uh, let's go with um, 9999. If that fixes it, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> I don't think I have anything else listening at nine nine or at four two four two, but let's let's see. All right, I do have something listening at port nine 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 nine. Okay, uh, <laughs> a self-reported sick day. Well, the thing is, I work remotely anyways, so I just work later into the afternoon, later into the evening. Somebody give me a port. Three 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 three. 6543. Is that random? 9998. 6543. Here we go. All right. Start up the back end. Refresh the page. Immediate connection. Maybe it was the port. Maybe it was the port. Um, okay, but <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can vote. So uh, yeah, it looks like, yeah. So from C6 to D4, number of votes is one. Beautiful. All right. All we had to do was change the port. Um, awesome. So we've at least we've okay, you can stop voting now, but we've at least broken down the from and the two. And so now we need to find that specific square and tell it that it should be highlighted in some way. Um, yeah. <laughs> Get the port repaired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my ports aren't working. Okay. Um, I think actually this is easy enough because we can just iterate over the cells um, and then find the cell with... The, you know, here's what I'm going to do. I'll say uh, cells by location is a map. Um, and then as I create each cell, um, I'll say uh, this dot cells by location dot set uh, the rank and file to be that specific cell. Um, rank, and so it's file rank, file rank. Like that. Um, Errors, yeah, it's it's the I killed the back end so it can't connect. But yeah, this should be uh, file rank, and then I can just access it by the the location. So um, here, this dot cells by location get from. So this is the from cell, and then we'll just uh, we'll just modify it. From, we'll take the element and we'll set the background to be red. Um, We also could have like a, I think that might be a good way to visualize it, is we have a, a different color for every move, and so that way you know which move is going from to, from to. Uh, but this, my friends, it's gonna do it. This is the winner. All right. Uh, <laughs> so start up the back end. Great, refresh this. It doesn't connect doesn't connect <laughs> let's just let's just change the port again that fixed it last month last time um what if we go with 6534 um and then over here 6351 that's a good one thank you uh lol uh 63 51. That's the port. Uh, here. Start that up. Refresh the page. It connects immediately for whatever reason. Uh, and so now you can vote in the chat. So, oh, look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, 
That's that that is awesome. Okay, so here here's the thing. Instead of just making it red, we could have a list of colors. Um and you can't <laughs> you can't move the white pieces. You're moving the black pieces. It's beautiful. But um I don't think I need to close the port because the the server um technically when the process exit, it no longer has the port itself. Yeah, so that's the next step. We're going to weight the color by the number of votes, and also we need a list of uh, colors that we can use. So that way, like, this move is a different color than this move, which is a different color than that move. I think that's the way we're going to go. And then they'll also have a different level of uh, intensity. Um, okay. <sighs> we're almost there. <laughs> I need a list of colors. I think for now, um, we'll just use basic colors, like red, green, blue, whatever. Um <laughs> I've said it multiple times. I'm only going to do this. I'm only going to do that. It's fine. Um, what am I doing? We are here. We need to get the colors. Uh, possible color. We. I mean, technically, how many chess pieces are there? 16? We only need 16 colors, but it's fine. Red. Blue. Uh, no, we can't use green because there's already green squares. Uh, Lello. Um, set the port to date date dot now divided by two thousand mod sixty. <laughs> so it's a new port every time. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, give me a uh, valid CSS colors. Purple. Uh, orange. Um, tomato. Pink. Honestly, this is is uh, well no navy navy is too close to blue. We'll do cyan. Okay, okay. Um, all right, all right, that's fine. Uh, well, I, I literally, I, I, don't, I don't have that much time, so I'm going to do this. Next time, I'll have more time, maybe. I don't know, I never have enough time, but next time, we'll spend more time on this, and we can, we'll do a heat map. We'll have, like, a nice color palette, but, okay, these are the colors that we can choose from. Um, oh, yeah, Rebecca Purple. Any, any Floor and Pop fans watching? That's his favorite color. Oh, yeah I, yeah, I cut my hair a little while ago. Okay. Um, I guess we'll just... Honestly, we'll pick a random color. Um, let's say, like, highlight color. How do you spell that? Highlight color. Um, we'll just grab a random color. Oh no, but the color needs to be the same every time. <laughs> um, eh, coding is hard. Uh, we'll call this like move colors. Uh, and that's a map. Um, and then uh, move the color for this. Move colors, get this move, or we just grab a random one. So we'll say colors at um, math dot floor of math dot random. Now it's possible that two different moves will have the same color, but this is fine for now. Uh, so this should grab a random color. If they have not made this move. Um, we'll set the color to be a random color. Cool. Um, and then the highlight color of the from cell is going to be that. And then votes is num votes. And then the same thing with the to cell. Um, okay. Well, I, I want to highlight all of them so everyone can see basically what your options are. That's why I'm highlighting all of them, not just the most voted one. Cool. So the cell has that information. Um, and then um, we'll say this dot update. And now each square can use this information to um, set the opacity, all that good stuff. Yeah, and the number of votes will change the opacity. 
Um, this seems fine. <laughs> this seems fine. The only thing is, after each uh, after each move, I need to reset the selected colors. Um, so when a move happens, reset the colors. This is fine. A conflict when having the same from cell. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that because you can move a. <laughs> That's how chess works. You can move a piece to two different places. We'll 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 worry about that next time. Um, so when a cell updates, we'll say and actually. Um, After a move happens, we need to remove all the highlighting. So like this dot cells for each cell cell dot um, highlight color and votes gets reset or just removed. <laughs> yeah, well, so yeah, it, it would be nice to get arrows working instead of colors. I don't know. I kind of just want an MVP minimum minimum viable product. Um. That if this dot num votes is a thing, this dot style dot background or this dot element dot style dot background equals this dot highlight color, and uh, we'll set the opacity. Well, how do I set the background opacity? Uh, move dot get is missing an exclamation mark. Thank you. If we have not or move colors dot yeah, if we have not set the color, set it. Thank you. That would have been a bug, bad bug. I guess we could do RGBA, but how do I do RGBA with these wonderful colors that I've chosen here? Coding is hard. I mean, at this point, I just need a list of I, I would need a list of colors. Uh, that's fine. Uh, list of hex colors. Let's see how DuckDuckGo does on this. Perfect. Let's just copy these. <laughs> We're gonna use these, and then we can set an opacity on it. Um, cool. Uh, also, uh, we we created the board over a few episodes, so the we created just the basic checkerboard a few weeks ago, and then today we got the pieces on the board, and then right now we got the pieces moving in response to a lie chess board or lee chess board. And what we're doing now is we're going to be highlighting moves that chat is voting for. Uh, but here we go. Okay, uh, I think I can keyboard foo this. Yeah, watch me. Watch before your very eyes. Oh, that didn't work. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> no, wait, I almost got this. Okay, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, wait. Okay, here we go. That. That. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> um. So now for uh, we gotta put it in this array instead. Um, magician, yeah, yeah. So this is our array of colors that we're gonna be choosing from, and all we need to do is to put uh, a two-character hex code on the end, and um, that is going to be the opacity. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I realize there, there's a lot of like newer coders watching. Um, in VS Code, you can do what's called a multi cursor. Um, so what I, basically what I did is I selected the pound, the octothorpe, the hashtag, and then you can press uh, Command D or Control D, and that puts a cursor at the next character that matches your selection. So now I have characters matching each of those, and now I can just type all day long and so then I'm combining that with like command left or command right to go to the end or the beginning yeah hex string my number two string 16 
Yeah, because the more votes, the darker it is. I like that. Why not? Um, thank you. Um, NFG. So we'll say uh, this.numvotes. Um, turn it into hex. The only thing is it's going to be like very small. Um, so should we take the number and add something to it? Scale it? Yeah, how do we scale it? There you go. Thank you. I was missing an O there. <laughs> um, using mod. Number of votes divided by total votes. But then I need to know the number of total votes. That's fine. <laughs> okay, so we take this and then turn that into hex. Um, we'll get there. Take that, multiply 255. We're going to put that on the end of the hex. Because that's going to give us um, an opacity, and then we need to just set total votes. Yeah, it should work. It should work. But uh, yeah, the only thing is we need to set total votes, which which I don't actually have. Um, from cell dot total votes equals total votes, which will calculate. Same thing with two cell. And now we need to figure out what the total votes are. Um, uh, total votes starts at zero. Uh, then we basically just have a coding challenge. We need to look at all the choices and then increment total votes. Um, I'm just going to have two loops. This code's getting real ugly, but that's okay. Forget about the move. Just grab the number of votes and then increase um, total votes by num votes. And then... Um, Yes, Lint, ignore that, because it should work. All right. Moment of truth. Uh, did I get it right the first time? Um, let's start up the back end. I could have used a reduce, yeah. Um, we need a new port. Oh, no, it connected. It, it did connect. Let's try again. So, um, well, I don't think it's working. <laughs> Um, from D7 to D6. So the D7 square is this one. Let's just look at it to see if it's getting its style set. Um, it's not. This dot? Do I need this dot somewhere? Total votes? Uh, no, in this case, it's just a local variable. Total votes is just there, and then we use it here. And then it'll get re reset later. Um, let's put this in a... Is total votes a valid number? That's probably a good thing to check. Um, but we'll say color equals that. Set the background equal to that. Say setting color with num votes, total votes, and uh, color. Uh, votes isn't an array. It's, it's just a total count. So uh, someone vote anybody vote now do exclamation mark move followed by a valid move for black uh, if you want to see the board you can go here wait did i just type f's in front how did that happen <laughs> exclamation mark move followed by a move is anybody doing it you are doing it why am I not getting any events? Oh, it's my turn. That makes sense. 
is, is my is my I have to, I have to make a move. Yeah, let me make a move. Um, uh, let's do this. All right, so I made a move. The board should have updated, and it did. And now you all can vote. <laughs> so if you do, um, exclamation mark move followed by uh, a valid move, and the move has to be in the format from square to square. Um, so this is working, but it's not actually calling our update function. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill the voting for now. But if we look back at the front end, um, so when a vote happens, we set total votes equal to zero. We look at all the votes that have just happened and set total votes to be the total number of votes that have happened. Then we look at each vote. Um, log that. What does this dot update do? This dot update gets the chessboard and then calls cell dot update. Cell dot update. Wait. Shouldn't this be this dot squares? For whatever reason, we're calling it cells. That's fine. Um, the update function here, I guess num votes might be zero or undefined. Oh, it's because it's just votes. It's not num votes. <laughs> Let's call it num votes. Well. Uh, and then also, yeah, total votes should be a thing too, though. Uh, num votes, total votes. All right. <sighs> one more, one more again. Here we go. Refresh the page. Does it? It was not connecting. Might have to change the port again. got to change the port, unfortunately. Um, let's go with 4782. Hello, uh, Matthias. Welcome to the show. Um, hey, and Dizzy, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Okay, so uh, in the chat, you can do exclamation mark move. Followed by oh, a setting color to one three undefined fifty five. <laughs> um, why are we getting f dot eight? All right, what are we setting the color to? This thing is jink. Nice color, yeah. This dot highlight color, is that the right thing? Highlight color. Oh, that's why. <sighs> this, all right. But also, why do we get like this decimal thing? Um, number of votes divided by total votes times 255. Yeah, that should be fine. Oh, it's giving us a um, yeah. Let's math dot floor it, and then two string that. Okay. Why this dot uh, this dot total? Do I just have that somewhere? Keep people keep. Um, asking about it, but so I'm I'm adding a property to the cell object here, which is total votes. And then over here, uh, that should have it. Floor drops the decimal. Yeah, it, it takes, if, if a number has a has a decimal place, it drops. Yeah, no worries, Oxnox. I've seen multiple people like asking me what that was, but I, th I think it's right. Do I, oh, do I need to pad it? Yeah, I need to pad start with zeros, don't I? Oh, it's working. It's working, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Um, 
some people want to move the pawn here. Some people want to move the pawn to this totally invalid square. Um, what's going on over here? <laughs> um, it's sort of working. I think it's it's kind of jank. Oh well, you moved the pawn. <laughs> I guess technically, after a uh, a pawn move, it should have reset everything. Yeah, castle is zero dash zero. Um, okay. Highlight color zero, uh, and then num votes gets reset. And that gets reset, and um, style dot background clear it. Okay. Um, I think the main issue is I'm pulling randomly from this array, and it's possible that the same color gets chosen twice. Yeah, we need to draw arrows, but I don't have the time for that. I I have to, I literally have to go right now. Um, let's finish this game. <laughs> what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna give you thirty seconds per move. So right now I think you, we are giving you a full minute. Um, you are gonna get thirty seconds per move, and uh, when this chess game is over, um, um. I'll leave. I'll leave. I don't know why that took me so long to say. All right, it's my move. Um, where am I going to go? Let's develop this bishop. We're going here. All right, uh, it's your turn to go. Uh, somebody wants to move the castle? That's not right. <laughs> Wait, what? That's not right. Um, let's see what the actual votes are. A1 to A1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an invalid move. You're black. You got to move black pieces. Um... H7 to H8. <laughs> H7. That's also an invalid. People are spamming invalid moves. <laughs> it's fine. If, if, if an invalid move wins, uh, it's, you just have 15 seconds to vote again. Everyone's trolling. Stop trolling. <laughs> but also, these colors are not that great. They're really not that great. A site for improving your coding skills, um, uh, Code Wars. Code Wars is nice. Making move A1 to A1. That's a bad move. Vote again. <laughs> I think the, um, oh, you know what? If the moves get reset, um, I don't ever reset all the colors of the cells. Yeah. I could teach you how to play chess. I'm not that great, though. I'm getting better. Um, I think the opac opacity is too low. All right, what move got made? Bishop got moved. <laughs> this, is, this is bad. <laughs> this is bad. Yeah, I need to reset on invalid moves. Um, do I code that right now, or do we just keep going? Um... Bad move. Still bot's turn to move. I, I guess I could say... Um, something like this. Keep going. Well, I, I think I can fix it. So, uh, when there was a bad move, we're going to emit an event. Bad move. Um, and then on the front end, if the event type is bad move... Also, we should be validating the move. I don't know. <laughs> uh, if the if the type is bad move, we basically want to do this. I could put it in a function. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna copy paste it. Um. <laughs> okay. It's currently my turn. What are we gonna do here? Uh, let's push this bishop away. So, it's your turn, chat. 
uh, in the chat, you can type exclamation mark move. Actually, is this even connected? It is, yeah. You can do exclamation mark move, uh, followed by uh, the square you're on and where you want to go. Um, so people want to move this bishop away. Somebody wants to move my rook, which you cannot do. <laughs> Uh, the code review gods have judged you. How do you plead? I plead guilty. Absolutely. But like I said, this, this, uh, I don't know if I said this. Um, all right. You made a bad, <laughs> the, the winner, what was the winner? The winner was H1 G1. You all know that's a bad move. <laughs> um, now people are voting to, uh, take the <laughs> take. Okay. The take one. Yeah. You're black. You're not white. Sorry. You're black. Um, so you took my, you took my, you took my horsey, and you put me in check. What the heck? What do I do now? I guess I'll do this. Or I could... No, 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 no. I'm going to do this. I'm going to move my, my move my bishop back. All right, but it's it's your turn to move. Um, Castle is zero, uh, O dash O. So, oh, I could have taken, taken with my pawn. I didn't even think about that. But it's your turn to move. Um, exclamation mark move followed by oh you can take take the bishop or move move this bishop out that's a good move see when people make valid moves it kind of makes sense right <laughs> um, cool so you took my bishop and I'm in check Actually, I'm not sure. Any any chess people, do you know if you want a castle, is it O dash O or is it zero dash zero? I think it's I think it's lower I think it's O. But um I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I've taken your bishop. What are you gonna do now? bring the bishop out here. I, uh, when you bring the bishop out, this isn't this the Roy Lopez? Something like that? <laughs> when the bishop attacks the, the knight like that? Yeah, we gotta work on this on these visuals because this is <laughs> this is not working. <laughs> Thank you, Fazzy. So, if you want to do a kingside castle, it's O-O. Queenside is O-O-O. Cool. So you move the bishop out. It's my turn. Uh, I am going to castle. All right, your move. I guess I'll leave, like, I probably should have a place on the page that is saying what moves uh, people are voting for. They want to take my pawn. They want to take my, my knight. Um... What move was that? The colors are getting lighter and lighter. I guess because the more votes there are, the... Um, yeah, maybe I only show the top three moves. Cool. What just happened? You took you took my horsey. <laughs> um, and take the bishop. All right, your move. I think that's a good spot for your knight. Multiple people are voting for that. Um, I think there's it's move the knight here or here or bring your bring the pawn out here. That's a good that's a good suggestion, Roger. Uh, we're not gonna do that right now, but I I like like the way you think. Um, so let's let's put that in here as a suggestion. But yeah, that would that would help a lot. I think also uh, showing arrows is going to be a lot better because right now with the colors you can't tell as much. I don't know. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Okay. Is it flipped? The opacity should increase them with the more votes. With more votes. So we need a, a higher number. Yeah, I don't know. Why is it going lighter? 
One minus this dot total votes. Don't multiply it by two fifty five. Well, the the main issue is we need it to be a we need it to be a hex value because we're, we're we're creating a hex color and hex color opacity. The last two characters of the hex color is the opacity. Yeah, it's not a percent of one hundred. I mean. Times, <laughs> let's do what Doc said. Doc, Doc usually knows. Okay. That's a good, thank you, Shepso. That's a good suggestion. <laughs> Math dot square root of, um, wait. Num votes divided by total votes times 255 to hex. All right. I believe it's my move. Um, I'm not going to get forked, am I? Got to watch out for the forks. Let's do this. It's your turn to move. Um, also, we could have completely broken it, but exclamation mark move. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice dark color. I like that. No, it got lighter. Game over? Are you about to checkmate me? <laughs> um, the most votes right now is D4 to F3, uh, which is to uh, attack my queen. I don't like that. 255 minus a fraction of 255? I don't know. Um, if people are voting to castle, it should, oh, <laughs> I'm, no, now that I think about it, I think our, our move validation on the back end does not allow O dash O or does it? Yep. It doesn't. <laughs> this is our move validation. Uh, you cannot castle in this game. You cannot castle. <laughs> Um, I don't know. We, we need to finish this game. Let's just, let's just finish this game because I have to go. I'm, I'm way, way over. Uh, okay. It's my turn to play. Uh, I definitely need to move out of trouble. Uh, let's do a little bit of this. All right. Your turn to play. Oh, <laughs> I just blundered my queen. Don't, don't take the queen. Don't take the queen. <laughs> I haven't handled uh, resigning or uh, offering a draw, but you took my queen. <laughs> That's through the game. Okay. Um, how can we recover? Let's just take a pawn. <laughs> I guess also I'm not showing when we're in check, but I think that's okay. Yeah, you guys got me. <sighs> take with the king or take with the knight? Yeah, and somebody has already mentioned this, but when two pieces want to move to the same square, we don't really have a way of signaling that. Um, yeah. Great job. All right. Let's see how fast you can take all my pieces. <laughs> so let's go here. I mean, it worked, it works well enough. There's a ton of like, there's a lot of things we need to do to make this better, but it, it's decent for an, in an hour and a half of coding is pretty decent. Split the cell. Well, I, I think uh, eventually we'll just we'll show arrows. We'll have arrows on the board, and then we won't need colors. Yeah, I think we're just we're just gonna do arrows. Okay, you took my pawn. Uh, do you want that pawn? You can have it. <laughs> my maps are showing. 
What do you mean? Oh, this. This thing. <laughs> this is the current votes in the chat. I'm only showing it because these colors are not a good indicator. Um, but this is the move H8 to E8 has one vote. Uh, D6 to E5 has six votes. So D6 to E5 would be uh, to take with the pawn. Um, maybe my time estimates are off. <laughs> Two hours? I don't know. All right. We got more pieces on the board we need to get rid of. Um, let's go here. Vote now. Two votes for uh, e5 to d4. Take with the pawn. You should take with your queen. That's definitely the best thing you can do. Take with the queen. Here. <laughs> All right. Um, at this point, I'm just throwing the game mainly because I got to go to work. But it's cool to see it play out. And actually, I don't know. I don't think I've handled the end state. What happens when the game is over? <laughs> um i'm uh, and welcome sergio but what we're doing is um right now i'm playing a game against twitch chat so we have this bot on lee chess called uh samwise gardener and uh in twitch chat you can vote for a move for the bot to make you all are are black uh, oh <laughs> you just took with your queen great great now it's an even game here we go um but what you can do, now that it's your turn, you can decide on a move to make. If you do exclamation mark move, uh, followed by a move in, in this format, the square you're on and the square you want to go to, um, after you have 30 seconds per move. So after 30 seconds, it just does the move that has the most votes. In this case, H8 to D8 has the most votes. Yeah, it's an even game. <laughs> totally even. Uh, someone, wants, someone wants to promote. All right, uh, let's protect. Protect. I mean, now I'm playing offensively, but... <laughs> yeah, so we, we built the Lee Chess bot uh, a few streams ago, um, and it didn't have a UI. Like, a few streams ago, all we did was I was showing uh, the votes here, um, and then... A couple of streams ago, we built the chessboard. Today, we put the pieces on the board, and we also got it so that we're reflecting the current state of the Lee chess game on this board that we made. Um, what happened? Oh, you moved you moved your rook there? What does that do? What does that do? <laughs> okay. Um, there, take that. Will there be two or more with the same vote? Uh, it, so right now, it's not doing any move validation. You could literally vote for um, any move. Uh, it sends it to the Lee Chess API, and if it's an invalid move, then um, it errors out, and then you just have to make another move. How do you promote? Oh, man, I didn't code that. <laughs> I don't think there's a way to promote right now. Uh, but G5 to F3 had the most votes. What was that? Oh. Rook. Okay. Um, got your, got that out of the way. I'm going to move there. Now it's your turn. Non-pawns OP. <laughs> um, I'd have to look at the leech SAP. I don't know the, what's like, what's the notation to promote? I think it's like, you do the move... You want to make with a Q, but right now uh, that would not be like my my system would um, throw out that move um, because it's not in this format. Is this OOP? Sort of. <laughs> it's really messy OOP. Um, when it's a tie, it's just the first one in the array. I I, I don't do any tie sort of tiebreaker. But yeah, there, there's a lot of things we need to add to this. We're going to add arrows instead of <laughs> mid, middle school chess. Yeah. Uh, instead of, because um, uh, right now we have colors indicating the moves that chat's making. 
eventually we'll add arrows. I'll make it so that I can click and move on this board instead of having to switch over to Lee Chess every time. What else? We'll, we'll allow you to castle. Right now, Twitch chat can't castle. <laughs> um, we'll also uh, allow you to promote, which you can't do right now. All right, thank you. Thank you, Murdoch. We'll put that in the, in the thing. So validate moves before factoring moves. Yeah, so right now, you could, you could technically vote to move my king. It would be an invalid move, but you could vote for it. But we need to not allow you to vote for it. Um, show check. Yeah, so right now we're not highlighting if the king is in check. Uh, we need to allow castling. Use arrows instead of colors. Um, change cell colors, previous move only. Oh yeah, highlight the previous move so we know what happened. Um, sound effects would be good. Yeah, these are great suggestions. Oh yeah, how to offer a draw, resign. We'll put all of this in the to-do. Um... I guess we'll put. We technically have two two code repos. One of them is the chessboard. The other one is the bot that um, talks to the uh, Lee Chess API. And then we have a chessboard that talks to our API. <laughs> How do you flip the board and throw? So uh, that's probably one thing I need to do is uh, be able to uh, just uh, flip flip the board like on Lee Chess. So. Um, on Lee Chess, you press F and it flips it. We need to be able to do that over here because I know for some people it's probably a little bit confusing because you're looking at the board in reverse because you're playing you're playing black. Yeah, if I, if the Lee Chess API might have something like this, like you, because uh, I know that they 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 label your moves. Like after you make a few moves, it says the kind of opening that it is. So if we could get that from the Lee Chess API, that'd be cool too. Yeah, and we need a game over screen too. All right. You all need to hurry up and beat me. <laughs> Checkmate me now. <laughs> all right, so uh, your turn. Yeah, I think moving the rook out uh, is a good call. Try try and mate me with with the, with the two rooks. The tree is on fire. Great job, everyone. <laughs> Um, yeah, Rook goes there, Rook goes here, yeah. Overtime where the board shrinks by one edge? What do you mean, like the pieces fall off the board <laughs> if you don't move them? Um, there. Exactly, okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, move that Rook in. So the rook is either going to uh, e1 or e2 or e3. Or take the pawn. I mean, that, that would be sacrificing your rook. Don't wreck, don't sacrifice your rook. Um, <laughs> um, okay. The rook, it's, it's cloud, cloud in my space. Um, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Mate in three. It says machine gun. Um, yeah, so uh, rook to uh, d3. That's a lot of votes. <laughs> what are you all voting for? Uh, move the pawns in. Um, e1 to... Oh, are we, bringing, are we bringing the knight in? Hey, smiley face. I feel like it's been a while. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for being here. Um, let's just get this pawn out of the way because it could potentially protect my king. We don't want to protect my king. <laughs> I want you all to checkmate me. All right, your move. Exclamation mark move followed by the move. Um... Oh, you're welcome, uh, Jakob. Um, but it's true. Nobody knows. I mean, I don't look. I have no idea what I'm doing, and look what I made. <laughs> I just, I just hacked it together. Uh, all right, so I'm in check. Let's see if we can solidify this as a checkmate. Probably if I 
go if I go here, then you check there and then check there. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm going here. Checkmate in two moves. <laughs> no, I I uh I blundered my queen at the beginning of the game and then I just gave up. <laughs> I've just been giving my pieces away. Um, that's a lot of votes. Wait, what? Where's, okay, I, was, I thought the move happened. Okay, so uh, I'm in check. I go here. All you got to do is checkmate. <laughs> Can you find the checkmate? Chess puzzle of the day. E3, E1. Everyone's voting for E3, E1. <laughs> D2, D8? Great job, everyone. <laughs> I forgot that I had this console log. Uh, move was made, game finish, stream was canceled, probably. This is about the, the API stream. You did it, chat. Great job. I kind of threw the game. But... I don't probably still couldn't have beat you even if I tried harder. But uh, yeah, I think this is some good progress today. We got a nice little chessboard. We labeled the ranks in the files. We got the pieces on the board. We got moves highlighting. I think we did good. We did good. <laughs> All right. Um, that's it for me. I'm way over. I'm like two hours over. But no, not that. Um, not that. That. <laughs> But now I'm just going to be working into the evening. That's all that means. But yeah, we're going to raid. Get those raid messages uh, ready. If you go here, uh, if you're a sub, this is our raid message. Um, and if you're not a sub, this is your raid message. But wherever we go, drop a follow if you like what they're doing. Share the love, all that good stuff. Um, and the next stream is planned for Monday. So yeah. Yeah. I guess that's true. I kind of had an advantage because you all, like, there's no way to promote a piece and there's no way to um, castle. <laughs> so I technically had an advantage. Uh, but oh well. Alrighty, everyone. Thanks for watching. This has been super fun. We made incredible progress. Uh, all this code's on GitHub, github.com slash coding garden. I'll, I'll push up all the stuff that we, uh, that we wrote today. And maybe next time we'll slow down. We'll refactor. We'll make the code nice and such um but yeah join us in this raid don't know where we're going but wherever we go share the love wherever you are in the world have a wonderful morning afternoon evening or night and until next time here is this i don't know why i'm doing all these hand motions i'm sorry <laughs> here's this mm -hmm.